Good afternoon. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted via WebEx, an online digital platform, and will be live streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. My name is Nancy Oman and I will be chairing this hearing. Panel members participating via WebEx and who can be seen and heard are Lisa Valentini, Zahir Bayat and Carl Nipfel. City staff will be assisting us throughout the meeting including moderating the WebEx platform. Agents, applicants and other interested Parties participating in this virtual hearing registered in advance and will be connecting through WebEx using a compatible electronic device. Their participation will be through audio only. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision for an application must submit a written request by email to the general email address for the Committee of Adjustment, Toronto and East York District Office. Please include your name, address and email address. All Committee of Adjustment and TLAB notifications as well as appeal updates will be sent by email only. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, known as TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, known as LPAT. Appeal instructions will be set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. Participants who have registered in advance will be connected to this virtual hearing and will be muted automatically upon entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with his or her presentation, if required, and the committee may ask questions and or take the matter directly into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee, and I will comment when you are reaching the five minute mark. When addressing the committee, please speak slowly and clearly state your name and address. Please confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. Where required, the applicant or agent will proceed first with a presentation of the application. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have completed their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent will be unmuted and will have an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of discussion and the application will be taken into committee for a decision. Please note, the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Panel members and staff, are there any declarations of interest for this afternoon? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a declaration of pecuniary interest on item number 25252 Bain. Avenue, um, I own property and live within the 60 meter notification zone for this application. Okay, thank you, Ms. Valentini. Uh, anyone else have an interest to declare? Seeing, no, seeing none. No, Madam yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, are there any requests to withdraw in um, this afternoon? Not that I'm aware of. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, we'll start the hearing with item number 22, 10 Dakota Avenue. 
Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a location map of neighbourhood support for the application, correspondence in support from members of the Toronto Island Housing Committee, as well as a 12 signature support, uh, petition in support signed by owners on Dakota Avenue. If I can have the agent identify himself, please. Yes, good afternoon, Madam uh, Chair and members. My name is Brian Spencer, and I am representing the owners of the property. Okay. Um, panel members, I don't think we need a presentation on this. Do you have any questions of the applicant? Uh, Mr. Niffel, you're muted if you are speaking. Try now. Sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yep. Uh, Mr. Mr. Spencer, I have a second uh, story terrace. Um, have you had any concerns expressed by immediate neighbors about overlook from that terrace? And the reason I'm asking is I'd be reluctant to place a condition on for further screening because I think it would be out of character with the cottage country uh, approach of the architecture. But I am interested to know whether or not there's been any concern expressed from people either behind or immediately adjacent about privacy from that deck. Okay, so we did get a um, we did have a conversation with one of the uh, uh, residents on the south side, and uh, we have decided that we will uh, be putting a screen across there because they were concerned, as well as the owners of the house too were concerned. Of what is your solution? You're going to do what? I didn't hear what you said. We'll be putting a screen on the south side. On the, on we've the addressed actual balcony. It and we've talked to the neighbor about it. Okay. So, okay. sorry, the south side is for just for clarification, the south side would be number eight Dakota, just to make it clear. Okay, and, and are you talking about adding a screen to the actual terrace? Yes. Yep. Uh, can you describe how high, and we should probably put that in as a condition? Oh, okay. It'd probably be a standard six foot high screen. Would we not go and with the wood screen? Would we not go with the standard one? Oh, sorry, uh, one point eight meter or one point nine meter screen. Um, we'll go with one point oh. five. That's the standard we use. Oh, okay. And, that sounds and fine. It's, and it's along the east side of the deck. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Well, that yeah. Um, on the on the side facing uh, number eight dwelling, which is the east. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay, and that should address that, and it was discussed. Any further questions, panel members? Seeing none, let's take it into committee. Madam Chairman, I'd like to move approval of the application uh, with condition that there be privacy um, screening provided along the east side of the second floor terrace. Um, I think with that change, the, um, the rather eclectic approach to the design I think is quite consistent with the island community. Um, and I think that this particular revision is, or this particular proposal is quite in keeping with the overall character of the island. Okay, I have a motion to approve, including condition for 1.5 meter screening on the <coughs> east side of the terrace, adjacent to number eight, moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by I'll second it. Ms. Valentini, all in favor? Your application has been unanimously approved with that condition. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Same to you. Uh, item number 23, 20 Gatwick Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, and no further correspondence and no speakers. Can I have the agent identify himself, please, for the record? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, the agent was uh, on the line prior to our break, but they have since left. So if you'd like, we can try giving them a call or, yeah. Yeah, try giving him a quick call.
<clears throat> Hi, Rick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. This is the Committee of Adjustment public <clears throat> hearing. Oh, hi. Yeah, sorry. I, uh, I, I, did, I ended the call when you, when, you, uh, when you guys went into recess, and I had trouble getting back in. So, yeah, I'm here now, though. Okay. Um, can I just have you identify yourself for the record, sir? I don't think we'll need a presentation, but I'll double-check with my members. Okay. Uh, Rick Bonger, 75 Redwood Avenue. I'm the authorized agent on behalf of the homeowners. Okay. Thank you. Um, panel members, I don't think we need a presentation. Do you have any questions of um, Mr. Bongers? Seeing none. Okie doke. We'll take it into committee then. So, Madam Chairman, when you when I looked at the original agenda, uh, the variances seemed large, and I expected a proposal that was going to be up keeping with the community. Uh, that isn't the case. As you see on uh, the drawing. By modular home addition. The very first one is it's a perspective that's been altered to show the home as altered. It's quite consistent with and fits in rather nicely with the community. I don't think that any of the variances are out of keeping the character, quality, or the function of this neighborhood, and I would move approval without getting. All right. Um, Mr. Niffel is moving approval uh, as he feels it fits within the character of the neighborhood and meets the four tests. Do I have a seconder? Okay, so second. seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, your application has been unanimously approved. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Bye. Um, bye. Uh, item number 24, 23 Helena Avenue. Uh, this is truly minor. Um, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Guido Costantino. I'm the agent designer for 23 Helena Avenue. Okay, panel members, do, do you have any questions of Mr. Constantino? No, we can take it straight into committee then. I'm prepared to bring forward a motion. Like you said, uh, Madam Chair, this is extremely minor. The existing um, floor space index is already over and I think they're just proposing about five meters square extra space. So my motion is for approval without any conditions. Okay, motion to approve, moved by Ms. Valentini, Second. seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor? Your application's unanimously approved. Thank you very much, have a nice day. Thank you, same to you. Item number 25, 252 Bain Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have a staff report from community planning. And um, we have no speakers. Can I have the agent please identify herself for the record? Uh, hello, my name is Carolyn Moss, agent for the applicant from Moss Sons Architects. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go straight to questions? Presentation. Sir, presentation. You need a presentation? So, sorry, everybody's cutting out for some reason. So I'm no. only getting par partial uh, sentences here. I don't need a presentation. It's Carl. Um, okay. So do any of you have any questions? No, thank you. What's wrong with the audio? Oh. Okay, um, I guess if there are no questions, then we'll take it directly into committee. Madam Chairman, uh, I think this is a fairly straightforward application. There's an addition, but it's been put on the rear of the house where it'll have um, limited impact on the community and the, the, the impact is not, in my view, negative. Uh, I think the variants are substantial, but I think the way in which this development controls is quite reasonable. And as the planning department uh, suggests in their comments, the, um, uh, the limit of, of number one should be to the third, uh, should limit it to the third story only because 
it, if it were applied to the entire building, there could be difficulty. So subject to the planning department's condition uh, to limit um, one of the variances um, and to build the project in accordance to submit a drawing, I would move for the location. Okay. Um, and I neglected to mention that Ms. Valentini is not participating as she has declared an interest in this item. So it's just the two members here. Will you be seconding that, Mr. Bayat? Yes, I will. Okay. All right. I have a motion to approve, including the planning condition in the April 30th report, moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay. The application has been unanimously approved. Do, do Thank you very much. <laughs> do, well, okay. All right. Okay. Item number 26. Is, is Lisa back? No, she just muted and left. Okay, well, I'm going to... Oh, I am back. I'm sorry. Excellent. I was trying to get my video started. Excellent. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Couldn't the find the button. Okay, no problem. We're hearing lots of other noises, though, but I'm glad you're back. Item 26, 215 South Kingsway. The committee has before it a before it, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a previous um, decision committee decision that affects the property. We have a staff report from forestry asking for condition number two, and we have correspondence in opposition from 213 South Kingsway, and is that individual on the line? Okay, so we have one speaker on this one. Can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Are you there, Mr. Garzelli? Hi, Tom, are you there? I've unmuted your microphone, so try speaking into the mic. Yeah. Okay, we'll try giving you a call on the uh, cell phone or uh, phone number we have here. Okay, Tom, you're Hello? now connected. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, I can. No, so we can hear a bit of an echo. If you're playing the hearing on another device, can you please turn the volume down on that device and only uh, speak through the through the phone? Yes, it's uh, Tom Garzelli, the agent for 215 South Kingsway. Hi, Mr. Groselli. Um, I'm going to need you to do a, a brief presentation. You have a maximum of five minutes because we do have one speaker in opposition. So the clock starts now. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair and uh, Committee of Adjustment. Um, we're here with uh, minor variances, uh, five in total, um, to remove an existing garage at the rear of the property and attach a single car garage to the existing dwelling on the south side. Um, the um, location of the garage itself uh, on the site plan, drawing A1, identifies that it's been set back to accommodate an existing uh, exit door and exit stair from the existing dwelling. Um, we have also um, respected the fact that we were looking for additional green space and additional space in the back, being an urban um, 
you know, uh, setting per se, uh, tight homes and small lots. Uh, we had a look at 211 uh, South Kingsway and also 213 South Kingsway, uh, which both uh, present a very similar uh, um, arrangement uh, on the property itself with an adjacent and attached, sorry, uh, garage. Um, on the east side, um, which is back-to-back -back properties, uh, they also continue to carry this um, design and um, intent when it comes to an attached garage off of the main road. Um, my minor variances, uh, as put before us, is the depth and width of the garage and also the side yard setback um, to the south property line. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Mr. Hurtado, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I am. Okay, please, um, if we can have your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes to speak. Can I share uh, information uh, that's in the package, or, what, or is somebody going to share that? Well, we've the, the packages that uh, you know are sent to the members in advance, so we go through all yeah. that material. If that's what you're asking. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. That, that's fine. Oh, so my so name is. is hang, hang on a second. Is there a specific slide? I, I, were you the one that sent yes. you the picture with the blue lines on the? Pavement? Yeah, that, that's me. That is me. Okay. Uh, there's. So do you want that then, picture up? Which picture do you want us to put up? There are two pictures. The one that I've drawn, uh, where it's it's a, a street look. Uh, yes, that first one. Okay. Right, and then uh, and then. Uh, and then yes, let's let's start with that one. Okay, so um, just your name and address for the record, and then I'll start the clock. Okay. Jorge Hurtado, two one three South Kingsway. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I am the resident uh, to the south of the uh, property that's applying for the variance. You've seen our submissions. Uh, I don't want to have to repeat our submissions uh, for you. We simply state that according to uh, the Committee of Adjustments, there is a four-part test that needs to be met in order for a variance to be uh, adopted. Uh, with respect, to, we submit that the materials provided to fail on that account. A, it is not a minor variance. What uh, my neighbors, who are actually very nice people, but what they've attempted to do is um, um, uh, is construct 14 and a half, 14 meters square extra of living space on a house that was already recently renovated it's pushed even in their own application to, to, to the uh, to the 60 percent maximum that's allowed in this area and what they're attempted to do is add on another uh, another living space uh, or another area uh, to the south of it which would up, uh, a butt with my backyard and interfere with my reasonable enjoyment of my and my family's uh, backyard. It would be a large wall facing uh, uh, our backyard where we enjoy our uh, uh, being outside. Is it desirable uh, uh, according to the test or uh, does it meet the intent and purposes of the zoning law? Frankly, no, it doesn't. We heard the submissions of my friend who uh, said that the idea was to remove an existing garage. That's already been done. They removed that existing garage that's on the uh, plan that's been put before you and they have attached they want to attach a garage well they have choices they didn't need to take down that garage yet until maybe they clarified this uh, issue before them second of uh, a third of all uh, with respect with great respect I'm not completely sure that what's being put forward to the committee is exactly what's the intent the intent here what's been put forward is a shrunken garage um, they already had a garage, they've taken it down, what it looks like, it's less room for a car. What they, in essence, are trying to put forward is the idea of more storage. This is a house, uh, friends, that uh, is already one of the bigger, bulkier homes. They have enough storage in there. There's two people that live there, plus a tenant. They're looking for extra storage. I think what exists already would give them all the storage they need. They're not attempting to park a garage. The car is smaller than uh, the garage is smaller than the existing cars they have now. Uh, with respect to the issue of there being extra green space, that's simply not true. They're currently digging a pool back there. So it's not that they're adding green space. I don't want to interfere with anybody's enjoyment of the land. I just, we just simply don't want them to have a wall pushed up right up against our property line. I have a gas line, if you see from that picture, you see from that picture to the left, there's a gas line that feeds to the pool. The dotted line to the left, that's what me and the neighbor actually we together looked at. That's where the property line is. 
the next line to the right uh, to the right of the dotted line would be where the eaves troughs hang over and then to the right of that, that little line that would be the new wall that would be the new wall and to the right would be that where the uh, the wall is would be allowed if, if we didn't seek a variance if you go to the next picture the one that shows you the street picture that's the proposed garage they actually showed us pictures of the of the of, of the of the uh, of the attachment that they wanted to add, but they haven't unfortunately submitted them here. But they were going to go up as far as high as as the middle of the uh, of the of the house, which would interfere. It would cut. Uh, it would uh, my cedars in the back would be cut back. Talking about green space, and um, and if you can see where the fence ends at the end of my house, that whole wall we would be looking at that big wall. We're one of the last original homes in this neighborhood, and we already boxed in to the south of us. This would only increase boxing in feeling and, 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 and result in us, you know, questionably uh, being able to enjoy our, our land and also having access to the back. In conclusion, and I thank you for your time, this is quite difficult because nobody wants to fight with their neighbors about these, about these things. But in conclusion, I'd like to say that the variance requested here is in fact not minor. It, does, it fails to meet the four points of the test as outlined by the committee and uh, interferes with the ability to not only for us enjoy the land, but I think would uh, um, not be in line with the rest of the character of the neighborhood. You have no evidence put before you to show you that this is in line with anything else in the neighborhood. I have though, provided those uh, pictures, those are my submissions. Thank you, Mr. Hurtado. Uh, Mr. Garzelli, can you please speak to the issues raised by the speaker? Um, yes, I can, actually. Um, if we go back to Mr. Hurtado's uh, um, drawing where it has the yellow line identifying the um, proposal, um, I guess resketching what we were proposing, um, it is a bit uh, deceiving. This one here, yes, that is correct. When we look at uh, to the right-hand side, the red brick house is uh, Mr. Horte's uh, house. The, um, as you can see, the wood fence along this property line today is eight feet high from the existing asphalt drive. And as you can see, just beyond that, uh, his patio is covered by a canopy identified either white or beige in the, in the distance. What happens here, correct, is that when you go to my elevations uh, presented to the city themselves, and if we can take a look at where the soffit line is, we've identified, for example, if we are, oh, sorry, on drawing, if we can please go to drawing A3, A3, and A, okay, 3.10 also identifies it. Um, we can see that the underside of soffit is eight foot one feet high. So if we have an existing fence that is eight feet high based on the existing condition, my soffit would be just above that. So I don't think that a, a solid wall would be um, entertained and or viewed at this point of the existing uh, dwelling um, on behalf of uh, Mr. Horte. Also, when we speak of the tree line, the tree line is um, a very easterly. Um, that tree line that at one time was, you know, against uh, the garage itself, the detached double garage, and therefore there would be no impact to this um, addition to the house, which is not a dwelling, it is a storage, it is a garage. Um, anything smaller than this, then wouldn't deem even a garage door, per se. And uh, I just wanted to bring to the attention of the committee um, one last time that there are um, good examples on the street um, of this attached garage when it comes to 213 and 211 uh, South Kingsway. Okay, panel members, do you have any uh, questions for Mr. Garzelli? <coughs> No questions? No? We'll take it into committee. Okay, any, um, any discussion? Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm a bit torn on this application. Um, I think that 
The applicant has made a valid point that the existing condition next door is a high fence and therefore perhaps the the garage wall is not going to obstruct what is already um, an area that's enclosed with the fence. I think that's valid. I have concern that the garage that's being built is too small to actually function as a garage. Give some credence, I think, to the to the uh, uh, the opposition's point that maybe it isn't a garage; it's something else. Um, the other question I have is: of all the places to place the garage, it couldn't actually be placed in a more awkward place for the adjacent neighbor. Um, had it been pushed further towards the front of the house, and I appreciate you're trying to avoid a side door, but there's a lot of other space there that could accommodate it. I. I actually don't think that this is a very good solution. Um, I don't think problems associated with privacy next door are quite as severe as being presented, but I also don't see the validity of this small addition as a garage. It's, it's very tiny. I doubt that it's going to function as a garage. So I'm a bit toward on the application. I, I, I don't see much to recommend it. Any further comments, panel members? Mr. Bayat, I can't hear you. I think you're muted. Um, if I may just uh, add, I was just looking at an image of 211 South Kingsway that has a similar garage attached to the house with the driveway and it is set back similar to the request in the application. Um, I personally don't see an issue with it, um, whether it's wide enough to accommodate uh, the vehicle, uh, that may be in question, uh, simply because uh, I suppose it, it functions as a driveway, but not necessarily as a garage. But the sense would be that I, I don't see any issue with it at this point. Okay. Any further uh, comments, panel members? Uh, I tend to agree, uh, agree with Mr. Uh, Nipfel's comments in terms of it really in, unable to function as a garage or a parking space. Um, so I think that in conjunction with the very close tight side yard setback, I, d I don't see that to be a common condition in this stretch of the Kingsway uh, where there's, you know, houses or properties that close together. Um, I, I guess we do see a few garages like that along there, but I don't know if the setbacks are the exact same, but this is seems to be very close to the property line. So I agree with Mr. Nipfel in terms of it uh, uh, not being an awkward placement of the garage and um, having some impact on the neighbor, not in terms of the height and and looming structure, but just in terms of the setback. Okay. I'm ready for a motion. Madam Chairman, I'd like to bring forth a motion to refuse the application. Okay, do I have a seconder? I'm going to second it. Okay, I have a motion to refuse the application. Moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Sorry, Ms. I'd like to dissent. Okay, and the chair abstains to avoid a tie. Okay, your application is refused. Thank you. All right, item number 27, 16 Wildwood Crescent. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a covering letter from Jeffrey Cook, the agent, a geotechnical engineering report, slope stability and erosion risk assess assessment prepared by TerraProbe. Um, we have a tree inventory for the subject property prepared by Urban Forest Associates. 
staff reports from forestry who are asking for condition number one. And we have correspondence from the Toronto Region Conservation Authority, five form letters in support, signed by number eight, nine, 10, 12, and 14, Wildwood Crescent. And we have no speakers other than the agent, if he can please identify himself for the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Martin Wade from MWLA Landscape Architects. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation? Can we go straight to questions? Madam Chairman, if there are no questions, I, we could spend a lot of time on this. The, the reality is this is a very well-researched application um, and it's been properly vetted with all the appropriate people. It clearly, um, the existing condition clearly needs to change. The deck needs to be rebuilt. The proposal to rebuild the deck is, uh, is a reasonable one and it's supported by all those people um, that have technical expertise in this area. Um, unless my colleagues have questions, I'd like to move to an approval of the application subject to the forestry condition because, uh, as I say, all of the technical material is before us. It's a very well presented application. Okay, I, I would agree. There was a lot of material that went along with this. Very engineering related, I might add. I learned a lot. Um, so I have a motion before us, moved by Mr. Nipfel to, uh, to approve the application, including the urban forestry and ravine protection, condition number one in the July 27th report. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that. Okay, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? The application has been unanimously approved. Thank you, Madam Chair and committee members. Thank you. Um, item number 28, 10 Rednor Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations. Six form letters in support including number six, eight, nine, 12, 14, and 17. So that's both adjacent neighbors are in support. We have no speakers and we did get some uh, interest expressed by number 12, who also was in support. Okay, can I have the agent identify herself, please, for the record? Hi, Madam Chair. Oh. Hi, uh, Sonia. I have control over muting and unmuting you, so uh, I will unmute you now, and uh, just you don't have to press anything. Okay, sorry about that. Um, hi, my name is Sonia Langmuir, and I'm the um, owner of the um, 10 Renner Road. Okay, in my notes, I think number 12 is concerned about a Japanese maple and a magnolia tree. Um, panel members, do you, I don't think we need a presentation. Do you have any questions of the agent? I have the same note about tree retention, so I wondered if the agent could speak to that. The, uh, one of the objectors, um, and I think it's next door, number 12, did talk about a concern that there's going to be a loss of uh, healthy. I wonder if the applicant could speak to that. Um, sorry, certainly, it's, I'm just, it's very hard to hear you, but um, yeah, so we... No, Sorry. I was just going to say basically um, it was the same note that Mr. Nitful had that I wrote down. So it's number 12, and I believe he was uh, just questioning uh, the Japanese maple and the magnolia tree that they would be, you know, not impacted. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, both my mom and I, who lives in, who lives in the uh, house, we totally enjoy the trees, and I let him know that we would definitely um, conform to all urban forestry requirements um, and would make any adjustments that we need to to make sure the trees are um, intact and uh, uh, that they stay on the property without any harm. And he's, he's fine with that. He's, he said, thanks for keeping me updated. I appreciate it. Okay. Are there any further questions, panel members? Seeing none, we'll take it into committee for a decision. Madam Chair, um, initially looking at this, I thought this was a rather large addition, but I, in my view, it does match in terms of depth, somewhat match the neighbor at 12. 
Um, and based on that and the fact that I'm assuming the existing FSI is under, but you know what the requesting isn't that much over what's permitted in the bylaw. Um, I feel, you know, the tree concerns have been addressed with the neighbor, then I would like to bring a motion forward for approval of the application. I feel that will fit in with uh, the neighbor to, the, to uh, I believe it's the north at 12, and I think it meets the four tests. Okay, do I have a seconder? I would second. Motion to approve, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Your application has been approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next item is uh, 29, uh, number 216, Glenholm Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a previous committee decision affecting the property, email correspondence from the assistant planner, tree protection, and plan review. And there, uh, and forestry is asking for condition number one. And we have correspondence from the manager of permits and enforcement parking transportation services. I believe uh, we have three form letters in support from number 215, 217, and 218, which is adjacent. And I have one speaker listed. Yeah? Okay. Um, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Um, good afternoon. My name is Joe Dome, 1101 Steels Avenue West, the agent for the applicant. Okay, I do have one speaker in opposition, so if you can do a brief presentation, no more than five minutes. I'm starting the clock now. Okay. Um, so first, um, I'd like to address variance number one and variance number six regarding the south side yard setback for the house and rear decks. As you can see in the site plan A100, the position of the house needs to be situated along that setback to accommodate the width of the driveway leading to the two parking spaces at the rear. And the entire width of the proposed duplexes is only down 5.94 meters. This side yard setback is consistent with examples on the street, such as directly across the street between uh, number 211 and 213, between 219 and 221, or between uh, 206 and 204, to name a few. And number 218 has a 0.35 meter side yard setback with the subject property. Regarding variance number five, uh, so the goal here is to create a comfortable and desirable duplex for families, and we feel that the FSI variance is a minor increase, even that there are no other variances here associated with number of stories, height, length, depth, or front and rear yard setbacks. Um, there is a very close example of our design down the street at 340 Glenholm. Regarding variance number three, uh, the front yard soft landscaping, and uh, variance number four, the rear yard soft landscaping, um, our design has tried to accommodate um, as much soft yard landscaping as possible while allowing the need for the front yard walkway and the rear yard parking pad. We have no issues from planning or transportation and uh, we're fine complying with the urban forestry condition. And additionally, we have those uh, three letters of support from 215, 217 and uh, 218 Glenholm. And uh, we hope you'll consider the variances for this application to be minor in nature and meeting the four tests. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so you, you're aware of the transportation, um, the canceling of the, the license for the front yard parking? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I'll now go to uh, the opposition and then we'll have you back to address any concerns that were raised. So, Ms. Passione, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am. All righty. Uh, so thank you, Matt. We just need your name and address for the record, and then you'll have five minutes um, to speak. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. My name is Sandra Pessioni, and I live at 208 Glenholm Avenue. Um, I guess I'm mainly concerned about the fact that this has been defined as a minor variance. Currently, there's a, a little bungalow that lives on the that's on the property, and we're going to a three-story duplex. Uh, so I'm confused about why the size uh, uh, bylaw is considered minor. Um, I'm concerned that it will become a, a rental property or an ARBNB property, and most of the residents in the neighborhood have lived there for many years. I've been there for 20 years, um, and we and and they're all uh, residents of, of the properties that they live at. So the fact that there would be um, a potential rental property 
is a major concern to me in terms of the added density to the, the neighborhood. Um, the fact that, that the uh, reference to 340 Glenholm is, uh, is actually kind of surprising because that's quite a distance from the current neighborhood that we're in. So that's my major concern is that the size of the dwelling is substantially uh, larger than uh, the properties, uh, the buildings in the, in the area and the property, uh, the building that's currently on the property. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Dome. So, oh, hello, can you hear me? I can. Okay, um, yeah, so um, to address uh, the uh, neighbor at uh, 208 uh, concerns, um, so we're essentially allowed to build um, a uh, three-story unit. Um, uh, we're allowed to build a duplex, and um, I, I feel that her uh, concerns um, are, are a bit unfounded in that respect, um, given that uh, we don't, uh, we don't um, uh, haven't triggered any of the other variances um, that would be associated with a concern of that nature. Okay. Panel members, do you have any questions of the agent? Mr. Bayat? Um, I do, uh, just a quick question. I, um, you're, you're creating two parking spaces in the back. There will be a certain loss of uh, soft landscaping as a result. Um, the front parking pad will be removed, presumably. Would that be returned to soft landscaping to compensate, perhaps, in a sense, for the loss in the back? Um, so everything that uh, that can be done to create softer landscaping um, as much as they can. So the driveway that uh, will lead to the rear. Um, so that is, um, if you take a look at the, uh, the site plan here. So there's the existing driveway there. There's some new soft yard landscaping um, in the front that's created to uh, basically where there isn't the, the walkway there. Um, and so, uh, you know, basically trying to create um, just as as much as we can fit in there while still um, keeping that driveway um, um, accessible. Thank you. I could just ask a further question relating to the parking pad at the back. That was part of my concern was the, the rede reduction in softscape in the back. It, do you need a double parking pad? Is that like a requirement? You need two parking spaces for the bylaw? Why the two parking pads? Um, so yeah, given that it's a duplex, um, to satisfy that um, aspect for two parking spaces, um, uh, so that we felt that that was uh, necessary. Bylaw does require two parking spaces for a duplex. Then is that what you're saying? Um, for, well, well, for in the sense of one for each unit. That's it. But I'm trying to figure out if that's a requirement of the zoning bylaw. Or if that's um, I, just a, a wish that you want to have two spaces. Um, as uh, basically, I mean, we wanted to to have two spaces here. So, um, as far as being aware of the actual uh, what it says uh, now in regards to the bylaw, we're not uh, entirely sure what that uh, says. But we're trying to have one per unit. Okay, any further questions? I have one question. Could we go to drawing A311? And my, my question has to do with the privacy from the, thank you. That's a lot of decking um, and stairway. It's quite a bit above grade. Um, I have concerns with the overlook and lack of privacy from those decks and stairs. Have you had any discussions with neighbors about that? And have you got any proposals for us to obviate the, um, the concern about overlook? That's, that's um, yeah, so um, the owner has reached out to that neighbor. Unfortunately, the, the neighbor um, has not uh, responded, but we're absolutely willing to put privacy screening um, to address those concerns. When you say you'd put privacy screening, those are, they're not large decks, but they're also connected by 
One, two, three, four, four stairs. Are you talking about screening the stairs as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, I believe you're, you're, are you referring to the, um, the south side specifically? The east elevation. East oh, I mean, I, I mean, uh, privacy screening. Are you referring to privacy screening all around, or are you referring to privacy screening? Well, it's, it's south. There, there's a there's a lot of area that's um, above ground and potentially a privacy problem. I think it's a privacy problem from people on both uh, to people on both sides of your property and also behind. So, I just wanted mm -hmm. to know if you've given that any thought because I, I I have some concerns about that. Okay, so yeah, we're absolutely willing to put privacy screening um, all around um, uh, to address those concerns. Sure. Okay, any further questions? So you're not talking about screening all sides of the decks and walkways, right? Because that, that would be quite a significant oh. bulky feature. I'm assuming just the sides? South, north, or I think it was the south side? Well, I'm well, questioning the actual design. It seems to me that that's a lot of exposure to other property. I'm wondering what also put forward. I, I really have trouble with so the privacy that tower of stairs decks that are on the back of the house. And I don't know that putting privacy screening around them all is is, is a great solution because it just makes the bulk of the building even bigger. I, I, I don't like the solution. Okay, um, so if I'm to address that uh, concern, so on the, the south side, um, because of the position of the stairs, um, the overlook there is a bit lower um, on that side, um, just because it's, it's closer, so that therefore the, um, um, you know, it's a, has a little bit less of an impact. But yeah, I mean, we're willing to put privacy screening um, on some, uh, you know, either just on the, the south side or um, on the other side as well. Uh, like what type of screening are you talking about? Like an opaque, like glass type screening or like big Wood, wood stuff's going to make it look even bulkier, I think. Yeah, we obviously would like to try to make it look as, as uh, not as uh, uh, not as bulky as possible. And, and if you look at the if you look at the site plan, which is um, A one hundred one, where the deck is shown. There are two terraces above that, and there's stairs connecting all that. And I would argue that they generate a privacy issue or properties on all sides of this project. But I'm not sure that a privacy screen is the answer. I, I personally question the solution. That, that tower of stairs and decks at the back of the thing is uh, Quite an obstacle to the people that live on either side and behind. And it, it doesn't sound as though that's been given very much consideration. Madam Chair, if I may just uh, uh, add on to Nefel's uh, uh, observation. Um, when I look at the back staircase structure, it seems, and of course, you've got uh, openings at each level. Uh, to me, the appearance would be one of a triplex, not a duplex. Um, if this is a duplex, uh, why do you have three, three different levels of uh, access from the back? Which again, you know, comes back to the staircase, the massing of this staircase structure that you've got at the back of the house. Yeah, uh, so I mean, we could remove um, the top level of um, uh, the deck and staircase. Um, so if that would uh, help to uh, alleviate some of those privacy concerns, um, you know, from that height perspective. Well, it would probably help a bit, I think. It would definitely make okay. a difference. It, uh... All right. 
Um, are there any further questions um, to the agent? Okay, so let's take it into committee for a decision then. Mr. Bayat, did you want to? S yeah, sure. Let me start. Uh, Madam Chair, let me just suggest that I'd like to move uh, approval of uh, this application with the proviso that the uh, staircase, the third level staircase that the agent mentioned could be removed, uh, be uh, removed so that we only have a staircase going from the first to the second levels and that uh, appropriate screening is provided for those levels that overlook neighbors' uh, spaces. Um, only on the decks? Yes, on the decks. Okay. All right. Um, and also including forestry condition number one. Uh, absolutely, sorry. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Um, do I have a seconder for that motion? So the motion is to approve the application, including forestry condition number one, removing removal of the staircase between the second and third floors, and screening um, on the decks only. So I'm assuming the third story deck is staying? No, the intention would be that that would be removed as the agent has indicated that's possible. Oh, okay. I didn't, okay, I wasn't clear on that either. I thought you just meant the staircase. Okay, so removal of the third floor no, deck. No, the deck and the staircase. And the staircase going to the second floor. The screening that I mentioned, or between the second and third the floor. The third floor. And then uh, yes. forestry condition number one. And screening and the, on the south side the of the decks. Yeah. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, all in favor of that motion. Okay, so your application has been approved with that motion attached, the conditions, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number 30. 10 El Fresco Lawn. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have project explanation letter that was circulated to the area neighbors by the property owners. We have a previous decision affecting the property. And we have a staff report from the manager of transport uh, permits and enforcement parking transportation. Uh, that's basically regarding an encroachment agreement for a, the deck. Okay, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? You there, Mr. Timestaw? No, it's done. Hello. Hi, are you there? I'm trying to unmute. I'm trying I, to unmute. Okay, but your you your muting's unmuted. controlled by us, so you're we can okay. hear you now. Okay. Yeah, this is Jan Teamstrip. I'm the agent and architect for the project. Okay. Do we have the opposition speaker? All right. We have one person speaking in opposition from number sixteen, Ludi. So I need you to do a brief yes. presentation, so you have no more than five minutes. And uh, starting now. Thank you. Okay, the proposal, uh, the main proposal on the house is to enclose the existing uh, deck on the second floor on the south side of the house, uh, which it, the variance for that basically is the floor space index, uh, which increased by 0 0.03. Uh, the existing floor space index is 0 0.71. The other variances are just for the backyard landscaping, garage uh, and the um, 
the hot tub. Now, we have an existing hot tub that's there. We're just going to replace it and just move it more into the corner to give us more space. Um, the landscaping uh, presently uh, is at uh, 6.0 meters. We're increasing it to 15.9 meters for soft landscaping. The other two variances, number two and four, relate to the storage shed for the uh, bike and the garden area for the uh, rear yard setback of 0.5 as opposed to 0.3 and the um, uh, roof overhang for it. The, I had met with, the, uh, with uh, the owners of number 16 on Monday morning to review her concerns regarding to the, bel uh, the enclosure of the balcony on the second floor. Um, and the, con the concern for her was not being the reduced view from the balcony, but the reduced view from the interior of the house, if you're sitting down a couple of feet from the window. Um, other than that, I think the rest, I think, is fairly straightforward. Okay. Um, so we'll hear from the opposition, and then we'll have you back to speak to the concerns raised. Okay, um, Ms. Gottfried, are you there? Good afternoon. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, Madam Chair and members of the committee, uh, my name is Anne Gottfried. I've lived at 16 Ludi Avenue for 46 years. My house is the north half of a semi and occupies lot 10 as shown on the survey. The east wall of 10 Alfresco Lawn run parallel, runs parallel to my rear lot line from beyond my north lot line to beyond my south lot line. With regard to this application, I'm concerned about the negative impact of the additional wall and extended roof from the proposed enclosure of the second floor balcony at 10 Alfresco. I believe that this enclosure does not constitute a minor variance. Um, I'm retired and have recently redesigned the back room of my first floor as an artist studio, and when I'm painting, access to natural light is very important. My new windows and the inside space are set up to optimize this light, particularly in the winter when the sun is low in the sky and sets more to the southwest. I've seen a diagram showing changes to sight lines, but the diagram doesn't tell the complete story of what I see when I look out my window. I apologize for failing to understand the deadline for visual material and will attempt to describe what photos would have demonstrated. Through my first floor window, I look, if I look directly west, a little more than half of what I see is nothing but the solid wall of 10 Alfresco. The open area that is left includes the view under the current roof that is over the balcony at number 10 and through which I can see trees and sky beyond. We are led to believe that the new construction will extend five foot seven on the east side, but the bay window will go out six foot five, plus, at the very least, an additional eight inches of soffit depth. The final distance is as yet unknown as it will depend on construction details. The result will be a significant loss to my already limited view, a loss not only in my ability to see trees and skies, but more importantly, a loss to the amount of light I will receive in a space where light is a priority. From my second floor, this time looking more towards the water than directly west, again, more than half of what I see is the wall and, in addition, the roof of 10 Alfresco. On my second floor, the new construction would cause an even greater loss to what I see and to the light I receive in my sitting room upstairs. Right now, the east wall of 10 Alfresco is a lovely light yellow and has some reflective properties, but in the future, I would have no control over the color of this wall, and if it was painted any darker, it would be very dramatic. Um, today, I can go out on my back deck or onto my second floor balcony. It's the summer. There's lots of sun, and if I turn to the south, my sight lines are clear and open to the water. However, number 16 is my year-round home. Therefore, I'm deeply concerned about the negative impact of this proposed balcony enclosure and the extension of the roof, particularly during the long and dark months of winter. As I'm sure you can all appreciate and attest to, the view from inside one's home and the light you get when inside that home contribute immensely to the enjoyment of your living space, particularly in January and February. 
I do understand the desire of the owners of number 10 al fresco to have a nice view and lots of light from a new bay window. I'm asking only that in considering their application, which I believe has inaccurately been described as a minor variance, you do not allow the improvement to their home to go ahead at the expense of my enjoyment and use of the home where I have lived for almost half a century. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Tamsta, um, can you please speak to the issues raised by Ms. Godfried? Sure. Um, the, di the, the, dif the distance between her house and number 10 is 31 feet which is just over nine, nine meters. So it's not like the house is, you know, really tied to it. When you're at the balcony, and her concerns are more for views from inside the house, uh, if you're sitting down a couple of feet from the window. Um, and I, th I think that, I think that's, in my view, somewhat, it is restrictive, but you're inside the house. Uh, and being nine, nine meters from it, I think it's, it's still quite a way. She still has the views um, from the balcony or even part of the, uh, uh, from inside the house. If, you, you know, if you're sitting, if you're standing at the window, of course you're gonna get a, a more view of what you're looking at. The further back into the house you go when you sit down, uh, the less view you get for any, 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 any window you're looking through. The wall itself is only a, is only a five foot six uh, wide wall, plus the 10 inches on the curve. Plus, we talked about the roof overhang, and I said that we would restrict our roof overhang at the widest part of the curve to, you know, six to eight inches, if that would help or any. Uh, but I think it's still being that distance away from, from the house, between the two houses, I still think it's, it's, it's uh, in our view, is minor. Okay, thank you. Panel members, do you have any questions of the agent? Okay, seeing none. Okay, we'll take it into committee. Discussion? In terms of, I do sympathize with the neighbor um, in terms of her, uh, the concerns she has raised. But when I look at the application and the variances, in my view, um, and I'm just going to speak to the enclosing of the covered balcony, I don't think the other variances have any significant impact um, in terms of the, the um, bike storage or the hot tub since it's kind of existing and um, I look at uh, enclosing the footprint of the covered balcony and it's really it's only increasing the floor space index um, slightly. I noted that the existing floor space index is 0 0.71 so um, it's it's not going up in any significant manner and I don't see any other um, any other variances for setbacks or whatnot in terms of uh, the actual enclosing, closure of the balcony. So um, while I sympathize uh, and I understand it's hard for change, particularly in uh, you know older na neighborhoods, um, I feel that this is a minor addition. I don't see there to be a dramatic impact and I support the application. I would second that motion. Okay. I would second that motion, actually. Okay. Um, so was that a motion, Ms. Valentini, to approve the application? It, I, I will turn that into a motion. It was more of a comment, but I'm happy to bring forward a motion for, for approval. Including the transportation condition in the May 4th report. It's uh, regarding an encroachment agreement for the deck. Oh, yes. Absolutely including that. Thank you. Okay, and that motion is seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? The application has been approved. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 31, 141 Adelaide Street West. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have a presentation package 
That includes a photograph of the existing and the proposed street, streetscape, uh, as well as southeast elevations, cross sections, and a relocation of the existing green roof. Previous decision affecting this property. And we have correspondence in opposition from Eileen Costello, representing the owners of 145 Adelaide Street West. Um, do we have... Mr. Nelligan is on the line, um, and Mr. Barbini. Okay, can I have the agent please identify himself for the um, record? Yes, my name is Armando Barbini. I represent the property owners and management company at 141 Adelaide Street West. Okay, the property yes, yeah, no, I ahead. was going to tell you, go ahead, and we need a five-minute oh. pres presentation, oh, you, you, but you already you know that. Sorry so about that. It's okay, I'm going to start the clock now, and then there will be one speaker after you're done. Uh, Madam okay, Pierce, thank you. For one second. Sorry? I, I wonder, in order to save time, the objection is from the adjacent property owner, um, and it has to do with... Uh, the problems of introducing a deck on top of an existing structure right next to them. I would find it helpful if the applicant could talk about the existing condition on the top of this um, one-story uh, component of the development, because the issue is what is going to change on top of the, that's, that's what the neighbor is objecting to, and I think we need to know what's changing. Okay, so if you can focus your presentation on that, that would probably be helpful because we've read all the materials. Sure. And, okay, thanks. Sure, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, if you the actual renovation that's being proposed, the variances that are being requested have specifically to do with the mezzanine floor that's being built in the interior of the property. The patio, and I guess the concern from the neighbor was also the new mechanical equipment, all of the elements do not require the committee's approval or apparent. Like the third, uh, though, we did, uh, the management company and myself, as well as the neighbor, did meet on Monday, a uh, virtual meeting we had, and we, just, and we discussed some other issues. And yes, they had some issues regarding noise and potential uh, view from some of the windows, what activities would go on. But at the time, the owner, the owners in the management company made it clear that they would maintain communication with them. Uh, they, they definitely have similar interest to continue attenuate a lot of the noises because they have other tenants in the building. It's not like this is their sole tenant, right? So there will be some mitigation um, done for this, for these aspects of it and they will maintain communication with the neighbor to the west. Now, when we left the meeting, there was really no uh, resolution that I, I heard other than they were, sorry about that. They were um, okay with our uh, the commitment that they made. Um, and we made it clear, and then we made it clear to the committee that the patio area could be done as of right. Now, we don't have a specific tenant at the time, although there has been some interest from a number of uh, different proponents, and there are a couple of restaurants that are interested. There are also some non-restaurant uses that are interested. So at this point, we showed what was potentially going to happen, which was going to be a restaurant with a patio. But again, that patio complies with the bylaws, so I'm not sure what we could do besides that. So if there's any other specific concerns with respect to the variances, I can address those. All right, well... Um, yeah. I think maybe uh, we should hear from the opposition and then then go from there because you'll have an opportunity to come back because, as you say, sure. you can have the patio as of right. Okay, mm -hmm. so, Mr. Nelligan, are you there? Hi, good afternoon to members of the committee. Um, and, and, yes, um, uh, my colleague uh, Eileen Costello uh, circulated a letter to, to the committee and, and to the applicant stating our concerns with the variances facilitating the use of the proposed roof patio and, and the impacts on, on our client's adjacent office space. Um, and, and in that letter, we did note that the, it had been frustrating that we hadn't been consulted on it. But, but as, as previously stated, a meeting did take place just this week where we were able to, to hash out some of our concerns and, and, um, and the applicant did agree that uh, moving forward, they would share 
uh, and consult with us once they proceed to design drawings. Um, and we'll maintain um, conversations with us with respect to the placement of mechanical equipment, uh, concerns with noise, smell, exhaust, lighting, etc. cetera. Um, so based on that discussion, I'm pleased to say that we're no longer objected to the variances sought and, and we thank the, the applicant for their commitment to uh, maintain those lines of dialogue with us. So uh, we are no longer um, uh, voicing our objection to you this afternoon. Uh, one thing I, I would note is maybe a, a potential ask is that if, if the committee does fit to approve these variances, that, that no conditions be added that would tie the approval to the plans that are submitted so that um, we can maintain the flexibility to discuss the location of uh, of screening and of, of mechanical moving forward. Okay, um, we don't have any uh, any correspondence from staff regarding any conditions, so I think we're okay on that front. Okay, Mr. Bar Barbini, looks like the objectors are withdrawing their objections as it seems you're able to um, work together moving forward. Yes. Okay, so... Yeah. Um, panel members, uh, based on this information, do you have any questions of Mr. Barbini? No? So we'll take it into committee then. Madam Chairman, um, I think that the welcome news that the, uh, the neighbors are going to work together. Um, and subject to that, uh, continuing to work together, I don't have any difficulties with this application. I'd like to move uh, approval of and without condition. Okay, do I have a seconder? I'll second that, Madam Chair. All right, I have a motion to approve, moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Your application has been unanimously approved. Thank you. Okay. The next item is item number 32, 15 Algonquin Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have uh, forestry, our, hmm, I don't have a condition here. Okay, there is a forestry report. Oh, I think that's the one that didn't have any conditions. And then correspondence in support from number 10, number 13, which is adjacent, as well as 17 uh, that are adjacent, and number seven, Algonquin and opposition from number 20. We have no speakers listed, and we do have the agent. If I could have the agent um, identify him or herself for the record. Hi there, uh, my name is Itai Joshua, and I am the agent and designer of the project and acting on behalf of the owner. All right, um, panel members, I mean, this variance to me is truly, truly, minor so i don't think we need a presentation i don't know if you have any questions i see a lot madam of... chair the only <laughs> yeah I, I have one question i the, the um the forestry condition or the forestry note basically says they couldn't inspect the the site um so i'm wondering if we might add a condition that um approval subject to approval of forestry because they haven't inspected the site. There may be something that they wish to uh, negotiate with. I, your um, hands or Edith's hand on whether we had a condition like that. Because it said they couldn't inspect it at some point. If they inspect it and they find a problem, should we have alerted okay. the applicant? Can we just, by just attach the report? Just a second. Through you, Madam Chair, that report was provided to us on May 4th when. Um, we still hadn't, uh, because of COVID, we still had not, uh, or Urban Forestry still had not been able to uh, get out and do inspections. And since then, you have a report dated April 12th, and the application is not listed on that report. So okay. it would be the August 12th. Oh, I see, the one that has the... Yeah, the August 12th report would, would um, override that one. So it looks like we're okay with no conditions then. Any other questions? Based on that, Madam Chairman. Okay, go ahead. If there are no questions, I'd like to, I'd like to move approval without conditions. It's a fairly simple application, and I don't believe that what's proposed is in any way um, a negative impact into the Okay, do I have a seconder? 
I'll second it. I'll second that. <laughs> okay, going with Ms. Valentini. She spoke first. All right. Uh, <laughs> approval is moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? The application is unanimously approved. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. Okay. We have uh, item number 33. Uh, 116 Spruce Hill Road, and then we have number 118. Um, do we have to do these separately, uh, separately, or can we kind of do them together? We have one speaker on 118, so it would be good if we can have the presentation cover both of these. Yeah, 116, 118 Spruce Hill. Same agent. So oh, can we do them sort of together? More I like think you should do them together and yep. then the rebuttal can be to whatever the concern is. Right. Okay. So can I start by having the agent um, identify herself, please, for the record? Yes, it's Maxine Chabso. Okay, um, so if I can, uh, we do have one speaker um, only on, on 118 Spruce Hill. So if you can do a presentation no more than five minutes that encompasses, um, I guess, the whole thing, the two of them, but focus it on the 118. Because it's, uh, it's the neighbor at 122, so on that side. OK. Um, I do know that the, uh, the owner at 122 is concerned about their overlook, or our overlook onto their skylights. And we had been in discussions with them uh, regarding putting a privacy screen on the third floor balcony, and uh, we're quite happy to do that. Um, the other, uh, that's uh, more or less related to the height variance uh, on that south or the north side of 118, and that same variance applies to 116 as well. Um, that variance is only pertaining to a, a dormer that's in the back corner of uh, the, both of those houses. Um, and there's also a, a staff report from planning which mentions that they are okay with that variance as long as we keep the same footprint for that third floor more or less. And we're happy to, to do that as well. Um, other than that, the um, Variances uh, for ghost floor, I think we're in line with other ones in the neighborhood, and I think you have some, I've submitted some information on that. Um, the uh, percentages are pretty well in line with uh, other houses on the street. We're also trying to do more or less a, a beach house with a typical beach house with a front porch on 118. And some of the variances are related to that front porch as well, but um, we felt that was important to do that front porch in keeping with the neighborhood spirit. Um, I think that's about all I need to say on that, um, but if um, the neighbor at 122 wants to chime in, that's fine with me. Yeah, before I go to the neighbor, I, I just, uh, I neglected to mention at the beginning as I was asking about combining the two, um, that we do have before us your justification of variances, and we do have a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Uh, we have a community planning reports for both 116 and 118. We have forestry asking for, um, conditions one and two on number 116 and one and three on number 118. And we have uh, correspondence from permits and enforcement parking transportation services. Uh, they want the driveway restored uh, on one yes. six, at 116. And then we have support from number 115 uh, that was only sent in for the property at 118. We do have the correspondence from uh, 122 Spruce Hill and correspondence on both of these files from 125 Balsam. So um, sorry for not mentioning that at the beginning. So now I'm going to go to the opposition. Uh, if I could have, uh, is Noel or Stuart speaking or both of you? Are you there? 
I'm here. This is Noelle. Uh, uh, so Noelle Ryan, uh, we live at 122 Spruce Hill. Uh, as we outlined, our biggest concern with the construction was uh, the overlook in our shower, uh, limiting our privacy, obviously. Uh, but we've since had discussions with the owners at 118. They've agreed uh, to construct a privacy screen on that third floor balcony. So as long as our privacy is maintained, uh, we're fine uh, to go ahead with this. Is that the, can you just, is that the side balcony? Which, which side is it on? It is, it's, it's the balcony on the north side of 118. North side of 118. On their third floor. Okay. Could I ask for clarification? The, the description of both applications talks about rear balconies. In fact, am I not correct? The balconies are on the side of both buildings. They're on the north side of one and the 16, rear. On the, and they're, but they're primarily on the side. If you look there, the majority of the exposure is to the side. There, there's and the same on the other one, the majority of the exposure is to the side. So when people are talking about overlook, I presume they're talking about overlook to the neighbor adjacent. That is correct. Yeah, 180 or uh, 122. I think they have a skylight in the over the shower. Yes. So yeah, they would have concerns about that so balcony. So. So to clarify, the balconies in both cases are on the side, not on the back, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so we're looking for screening um, for the balcony on 118 Spruce Hill Road. On the and third floor? It's on the third floor. But they have... Uh... So, um, Noel, so you, you yes. only want the screening on the third floor balcony, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And they, they provided us with a letter that says that they are committing to building some privacy screening for us there. Oh, there's only a third floor one there, okay. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to add, or that was your main concern and it's resolved now? That's our main concern, and I think it's been resolved. All righty. Um, so if I can go back to um, the agent and ask the panel members if you have any uh, further questions from the agent. No? Okay. So we'll take it into committee then. We're dealing with 116. Right? Yeah, well, let's do 116 first. So um, okay. 116 has forestry one and two. It's got a transportation condition in August 5 report to restore the driveway. And then it's got the May 4th planning condition, which, um, let me just maximize this here. Yeah, which speaks to um, variance number one related to the side exterior main wall height be limited to the proposed third story, provided that the third story be constructed substantially in accordance with the site plan. And the obsolete driveway. Yeah, I said that already. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, so those are the conditions for 116. Are we adding a condition for privacy screening? No. Well, we don't, nobody's asked for it on that side. Um, okay, if, unless if I might, I, if I, would, I wouldn't like to add our normal condition. I'd like them to be flexible with negotiating a solution that's in keeping with both buildings. So. I'm happy if we don't actually put that condition in on the understanding that the members have agreed. I mean, um, <coughs> there, there's nobody uh, that has um, stated any objection on that side. It sounds like if it does come up that the app or that the, uh, the agent and the owners are probably willing to do the same on that side if, if those people want it but right now there's no no ask for it okay okay so just so. i'm happy to bring forward a motion on 116 we're talking about 116 uh, yeah. motion 
Yep, motion for approval. Um, in my view, I believe it meets the four tests. Um, I don't find the variances to be, um, I find them to be in keeping with what is currently happening in the neighborhood. So um, it's a for approval subject to the conditions that we spoke of, the planning conditions, that it be built substantially in accordance with the plans, urban forestry condition one and two, and the conditions set out in the transportation uh, memo in terms of restoring the curb cut and softscaping the boulevard. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Second. I'll second that, Madam Chair. Okay. All right, so moved with all the conditions that we've stated. Um, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, so 116 is approved unanimously. <coughs> so now for number 118, we're looking for forestry conditions one and three. The same planning condition, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same planning condition uh, <coughs> that we had for the other one in the May 4th report. And then a condition for privacy screening up to 1.5 meters on the third floor balcony. Although, do they want that? Sorry? Is that what? I think that's what Carl was saying. I don't know that he wants. I I, I don't think it's oh, necessary. Oh, you don't want it on that side either? Okay. No, no, I, I don't think it's necessary to put the specific. We've got agreement. Um, okay. The standards might not be the best solution here. And so if the two owners are prepared to go see something that works for both of them, I think that's a better solution in this case. Um, I, okay, I just would like to just go to the owner of 122. Noel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, so I, did you hear Mr. Nipfel doesn't feel it's necessary to put the condition in if you have a letter or are you more comfortable with us putting the condition in for screening on the balcony on the third floor, north side? I think I'm, I'm comfortable. Uh, we've got a relationship with the neighbors uh, with the letter that they provided. Okay. That okay. they'll work with us on that. All right, so, so we won't put the condition in then. Um, and um, hopefully everything works out. Um, sounds like you're all getting along now to work things out. Okay, so let's go back into committee then. So I need a motion for, for the uh, second. Sorry. One. I just have a question. This, yes. I'm getting very nitpicky, I understand, but the planning report requires conditions that it be built substantially in accordance with the plans, including ah, okay. the south elevation. So, you know, so, I don't know how picky staff will be about there being a screen and anybody have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Maybe we it, want to insert a condition the way for screening. Right. So the way they've written their um, condition is that it, it's related to the um, height of the walls and the third story addition. And it, I, I don't know that it, it's related to the decks. If you want to be you can say excluding the deck on the north side. If you for this one for 118, just so that gives them some flexibility in how they deal with the deck. What what is what is the way? What is the best way to allow flexibility in how they screen the deck? Do we? I understand, Lisa, your concern. If the screening's not there, is there going to be a problem later on? Is Anita, what would your view be if we just didn't put the condition in? What if we, I was going to say, what if we put in? I think in it's, pro if, the, if the agent and if the neighbor and the applicants are in agreement with how it's going to be screened, I, I don't know that the city standard condition is going to impede them. And I don't believe that the variance tying it to the, the plans, that's related to height. It's not related to the windows placement or decking. What if we just put screening satisfactory, you know, to, to the neighbor or then who's neighbor going to sign off on that? Oh, okay. If they're if they're satisfied with it, then I mean. So so you're comfortable that we just. If the, with it if as the as neighbor is. is comfortable with the agreement that mm -hmm. they've reached. Okay. Sometimes good, sometimes, good the, good sometimes our decking right. sometimes our deckings. Uh, our screening condition can be actually worse, mm -hmm. make something worse than what yeah. neighbors can 
work out? That's my concern. Okay. So you think we should add excluding the deck in here then, no. or nothing? All right, so we're going just with the forestry one and three and the planning condition. Okay, who wants to do the honors? Oh, Lisa, can you make your motion? I'm happy. Sorry, go ahead, Lee. I'll make the motion for approval, uh, subject to the planning conditions uh, and urban forestry one and three. Okay, do I have second a that. seconder? Okay, seconded by Mr. Second. Niff. Seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor? Okay, the application has been unanimously approved. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Next item is item number 35, 506 Scarborough Road. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a covering letter from Hassam Rastami, the agent. We have correspondence in opposition from several addresses on Scarborough Road. 491, 496, 498, 489, 492, 487, and 497. I have uh, six speakers listed. Do we have six? No, we have all uh, besides the last speakers there, uh, Louise have, and Anthony. Yeah. We have five. We have five of the six, yeah. Okay. Um, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Hello. Uh, hi, good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yep, can hear you well. Good, fantastic. My name is Hassan Rostami, and I'm the architect and the agent uh, for the noted property. Okay, Mr. Rostami, I've got five, uh, five property owners that will be speaking, so can you do a presentation and, and just we know what the variances are, so please tell us why you feel you need the variances, and then we'll hear from the opposition. I'm starting. I'll try to yeah. do my. Okay, I'm starting the clock now. Yeah. Uh, can we have the, the cover letter that I've sent to the committee? Strong? Sure. Thank you. Um, so the property in question is um, the 506 Scarborough. It's the second um, house from Gerard Street, south of Gerard Street. Um, uh, my client bought it in, in the summer of uh, 2019 and was planning to move to the neighborhood and just wanted to, to make a substantial renovation because it is in the state of despair. Um, and she was interested in having secondary units if the buyer was allowing it, and um, we had checked, and based on the OPA Amendment 418 and the bylaws um, that was adopted in the March of 2019, we, we felt comfortable that we can actually uh, get the variances from the committee uh, to have secondary units if the variances was needed. We have started to try to fit this um, proposal in the envelope, completely allowed uh, by a zoning by law, um, but rather than having the, the units in the basement, which is usually the case, um, we have tried to maintain um, the facade and the roof of the existing house to the front of the house and had the addition in the back. So um, if you go to the second uh, page of this cover letter, so you can see the existing house um, on the top and on the bottom you can see the addition that we are proposing. There is an existing curb cut and um, illegal drive um, to the house already existing that we are not touching, we are maintaining it. And um, at the time of um, purchase of this house, the owner thought that the, um, because the drive was um, legal, 
that the existing parking space is legal as well. But later, the, um, unfortunately, the city could not find a record of the existing parking to be uh, legal. Uh, so that's why, um, even though with the number of the parkings that we are proposing here, we are adhering to the zoning bylaw. So bylaw, the first, um, because of the reduced number of parkings required, the first secondary unit does not need to have a parking, and the second one can have a parking tandem to the existing. So that's why uh, we have tried to fit that inside our property line. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the drop in the back and the length of the property, we could not fit them behind the main wall of the existing wall. Um, in addition to that, even though we are adhering to the zoning bylaw in terms of the number of the parking spaces, if you go to the next page, you can see a map that shows the property just 10 meters away from the property, there's the there's bus stops, and there's the major artery of Jarda Street East that would take you with a bus um, with five to 10 minutes to Danforth GO station and Main Street subway station. So um, that's something that we, we will probably hear from the oppositions in terms of the parking. And I'm going to talk about that a bit more um, at, the, at the end of the presentation. In terms of the main wall I just discussed, um, and then the number of stories in the addition, um, in the area, uh, if you go to the next page of the cover letter, so there are just um, two samples that you know I included. There are more of uh, these samples. Uh, you can see these are very close to the house. One of them is just adjacent, and the other one is just one uh, south of the adjacent one. And both of them are similar in terms of the front of them. But in the back, we have a two-story with a pitch roof, almost a two-and-a-half-story addition that was added later. Uh, in addition to these houses, there are um, larger properties with three stories, uh, more significantly uh, than what we're proposing. Uh, two of them, just for example, is 437, uh, 477 and 479 Scarborough Road. Uh, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, I'll have you back after we hear from the opposition. Thank you. Okay, Margaret Nortman, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay, if you can just identify yourself, name and address, and then I'll start the clock, and you'll have five minutes. Okay. Okay, so my name is Margaret Nortman, and I'm owner of 504 Scarborough Road, and the name immediately to the south of 506 Scarborough Road. After close study of the actual site plans and discussion with community members, I found that the variances are not minor, but in actuality quite major, resembling a large triplex, which does not reflect the aesthetic or character of the neighborhood, which consists predominantly of pre- and post-war bungalows and semis, and will impede the enjoyment of my family and I of our property. As a result, I'm in full opposition. Um, I didn't hear the last word you said, sorry. Opposition. I said as a result, I'm in full opposition. I'm just reiterating that I'm in opposition. Okay. No, I kind of cut out, so I missed part of it. Sorry about that. That's a, okay, no problem. Um, that's that's it. Anything yeah, else? Yeah, that's okay. it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The next speaker, it's either Darcy McLean or Megan Patterson McLean. It's Darcy McLean. Okay, if you can identify yourself for the record, name and address, please. Yeah, my name is Darcy McLean. I live at 501 Scarborough, almost directly across, but one house and directly across from uh, 506. All right, I'm starting the clock now. You have five minutes. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, we've lived on Scarborough Road for nearly 10 years, and apart from the size of the building, my main concern is an issue with the parking. Uh, currently, parking is at a premium on Scarborough Road, with many houses having no laneways. A few houses have dedicated laneways, uh, such as 506. Um, and uh, there are a few of us that have, there are six uh, residences that have shared laneways. Often, we're unable to park on our own street, and as a result, we're having to look at some of the other streets, uh, both east and west of us, um, and they're starting to fill up, and north of us on Dengate, uh, having to cross uh, Gerard with a light that doesn't change as often as uh, you might like. Um, we're prohibited from 
restricted from parking on the south side of Girard during rush hour. And just within the first 10 houses of Girard, uh, there's more than a dozen young children, all of, under the age of 12, as well as uh, seniors. And having to trek sporting equipment, um, groceries, strollers, infants in bucket seats, uh, you know, parents and residents are having to, uh, you know, stop illegally to, to, uh, to unload, to try and navigate and find parking. So uh, currently there is a dedicated laneway on the property. Um, and, you know, I've seen up to two cars um, fit on there. I'm concerned that building a multi-unit dwelling, we're going to be adding several more cars onto the street, which is already packed. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. All right. Okay. The next speaker is Paul and or Barb Brickus. Hi, it's uh, Paul Brickus here. Hi. I just need your name and address for the record. Sure. I am Paul Brickus. I live at 500 Scarborough Road, and my mother Claire lives at 502 Scarborough Road where the photos of the houses that had additions um, shown earlier. Okay, I'll start the clock now. You have five minutes. Sure, uh, we're at 500 Scarborough Road. As I mentioned, my mother's house next door at 502 Scarborough Road. Both homes had additions put on and they remain today as single family homes. 500 Scarborough Road has three bedrooms, three bathrooms. 502 Scarborough Road has two bedrooms, two bathrooms. The amount of parking space per home remain as they were from day one when the homes were built. Uh, both additions were built without requiring any variances. In other words, we followed the building requirements in relation to size, height, and everything else. As we worked through the plans with the designers for both homes, I had an appreciation of why we should stay within the existing zoning requirements. If the height of the building exceeded the allowable requirements, we, we, we would be eliminating a great amount of sunlight from our neighbor's property. If our main floor raised deck exceeds allowable depth, we could probably look into our neighbor's bedroom window, which I'm sure they would not appreciate. I understand why there are limitations and why we're allowed to do, to do what we could and why we weren't allowed to do certain things so as not to encroach upon our neighbor's privacy and space. This, this addition at 506 does not seem to have that same consideration. Um, the one other item I have is the height of the building. Um, this is a full story above um, what ours are. Um, so it's actually, I believe the zoning maximum is 8.5 meters. This is about 11.27 or 12 meters at the front of the building. Now, when we were working through our drawings, I understand that that, that height of the building should be taking at the midpoint of the building, if I'm correct. In other words, the front of the house, the back, find the midpoint, and that should be the height of the building that has been submitted. Yet the drawings show 37 and a half feet height or or 11.27 meters at the front of the building and yet the building slopes back to the backyard by about 10 feet or or three meters in other words i find that number a little bit skewed and I'm, unless i'm missing something and that's it i i i do oppose the the, the height of this building and the size okay um, thank you very much and we'll have the applicant come back after and he can speak to what you just mentioned about the height. The next speaker is Matthew Helfand representing the owners of 498. Are you on the line? Good afternoon members of the committee. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Matthew Helfand, and I'm a lawyer with the firm of Airden Burles LLP. On behalf of Ms. Wendy King and Mr. Christopher Allen, the owners of 498 Scarborough Road, the property just to the south of 506, which is the subject of the current application. The applicant, as you know, has submitted a request for four variances to permit the construction of a three-story addition to an existing home at 506 Scarborough. My clients are opposed to the requested variances number one, three, and four for the following reasons. And I request on behalf of my clients that the committee reject the application for these variances. As the committee is aware, the applicant must demonstrate that the requested variances individually and collectively meet the four tests. And a failure to meet but one of these tests 
is fatal to the application. It's my first submission that the proposal does not maintain the intent and purpose of the official plan. The official plan directs through its policy and non-policy text that the city's neighborhoods are considered physically stable areas. A key objective in the plan is that new development must respect and reinforce the general physical patterns in the neighborhood. And the plan advises that no changes shall be made through a rezoning or minor variance that is out of keeping the physical character of the neighborhood. As you will see from the photos that are attached to my letter as Appendix A, Thank you. The homes in the surrounding area are predominantly bungalows and small two-story homes. The applicant's proposal on its face is significantly larger than the surrounding homes and is simply out of keeping with the observable neighborhood character. I would encourage the committee to scroll through these photos and see for yourself. Further, Policy 3.122 of the official plan provides that new development will locate and organize vehicle parking to minimize its impact on the property and on surrounding properties. As this committee has already heard, the proposal introduces an intensified use on the site and does not specifically accommodate for new parking, despite the fact that parking is, as the committee has heard, a significant issue in the neighborhood already. As a result, this proposal is likely to have an adverse impact on surrounding properties whose owners already have a very challenging time obtaining on-street parking. Now, it's not immediately clear whether the applicant intends to introduce any new parking spots with this proposal. The applicant notes in the cover letter that there is no intention to provide any new parking spots, only legalize an existing parking spot. However, I would ask the committee to look at drawing A30.1, which suggests that a new tandem parking spot will be created in addition to the existing parking space. It's therefore not clear what the applicant's plans are with respect to parking, but in any event, there is no guarantee that the applicant will even obtain the necessary municipal approvals to facilitate front yard or boulevard parking. And the applicant overall has provided no evidence, expert or otherwise, to suggest that increased traffic or the need for parking can be accommodated by this proposal. Now, my second submission is with respect to the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. My client takes no particular issue with respect to requested variance two and concedes that it may in fact be minor. But requested variances one and three will result, sorry, one and four will result in the construction of two new secondary suites which have a built form and massing that is much larger than what is contemplated by the zoning bylaw with respect to secondary suites. Now, a similar built form may in some circumstances be permitted by the zoning bylaw for a simple single family home. But the proposal includes two new additional secondary suites, which is a greatly intensified use and is not contemplated by the zoning bylaw. This is not the building envelope that is comp contemplated for two new secondary suites despite what the applicant has suggested. As stated, the applicant proposes to build a new structure which is much bigger than the existing homes in the area in order to facilitate an intensified use on the lands that will disrupt the streetscape and the pedestrian experience and introduce new vehicles that will place a great burden on the existing parking supply. For these reasons, it's my submission that the requested variances one, three, and four are not minor, are not desirable, and should be rejected by the committee. Thank you very much. Those are my submissions. Okay, thank you, sir. The next speaker, Ms. Uh, Trish Snyder, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Okay, if you can please identify yourself, name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Trish Snyder, and we live at 496 Scarborough Road, just down the street from the property we're in, in question. Okay. Um, 
Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I've lived in Toronto as a homeowner for 20 years. I've received many requests um, for these variances. I've never spoken up about a single one. This is my first time. And I'm really sorry that I have to follow the very impressive lawyer who just spoke. <laughs> Anyways, I'm here to speak um, not out of my own self-interest, but out of the interest of the community because I'm all for progress but I'm also all for progress that positively impacts the greater good. And I have concerns about parking, about additional pressure on the infrastructure, about environmental pressure, and about the neighborhood's ability to handle this additional capacity. First of all, as many um, have spoken about already, parking is a problem around here. Um, usually a cyclist, but we do own a car and for the first, I lived in this neighborhood particularly for 14 years. For the last, I don't know, handful of years, as condos go up in the area, as people convert to duplexes, parking has become extremely challenging. Uh, I used to, before I could count on one hand the number of times that I'd have to park somewhere other than my own street, and uh, now I would say it's probably a couple of times a week that I'm having to park a block or two or three blocks away from my house. So it's a minor inconvenience. I'm able-bodied, our kids are grown, I'm not schlepping a stroller or groceries uh, or, or equipment or anything like that. But I know that this is a neighborhood where a lot of young families like to move in and raise their children. And it's a major inconvenience not to have the opportunity to park on your own street. Um, I'm imagining a worst case scenario because this is a proposed triplex. Imagine if three couples or three families moved into this space. Imagine each of the members of the household had a car. I know that there's transit in the area, but we all know that uh, not everyone uses it. And I can't imagine how an additional up to six cars would be accommodated in this neighborhood. Uh, next, the widening the request to widen the driveway to have the tandem parking. You know, love the idea that there would be parking for two cars, which would take some pressure off the street. Uh, a two-car parking would be a dream for most of us in this area. However, the plan looks like, and the, the this um, yes existing concrete to remain. If they're adding more concrete to accommodate the tandem parking. I'm wondering how the city likes decisions like that because I know that it puts additional pressure on the sewer system if it's an impermeable surface such as concrete. Next is the capacity. Um, this neighborhood has been getting increasing pressure from people moving into the area in, in high density spaces like condos but it also has a ton of pressure on traffic from people who pass through on those major arteries, Kingston Road, Girard. You know, 10 years ago when I moved here, it would take me 10, uh, 20 minutes tops to be able to drive downtown door to door. Now it probably takes 30 minutes on a super fast day where I'm not during rush hour. And I remember a couple of times over the winter where it took me more than an hour to drive 10 kilometers. And that's not just people moving or moving from the, the city core out to our neighborhood, it's people passing through our neighborhood to get further east out to places like Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa. So I think we not only have to consider our immediate neighbors, but we have to consider the other people who are trying to get to their homes as well. Adding more people to this area is gonna make my life more difficult for everyone. Um, from an environmental standpoint, I just know that already we're facing serious extra capacity on aging infrastructure in terms of uh, electricity and other utilities. And when we start adding apartment buildings like this, which essentially it is, to and neighborhoods where the built environment is typically single family homes, how are we accounting for the extra environmental footprint that these additional residents are gonna add. So I'm all in favor of making Toronto better for citizens, but what I'm seeing is that this is only gonna make it bigger 
and not necessarily better. So I oppose. Thank you very much. Uh, did the last speaker call? No? Okay. So, Mr. Rostami, are you there? Hello? Hello? Hi. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I would like you to uh, respond to the issues that were raised, only the issues that were raised. Sure. Um, I really uh, sympathize and understand the points that brought up with the, with the neighbors. We, uh, I live actually 10 minutes walk away from this neighborhood. I am a part of this neighborhood and I really like the area. When we were designing this, um, this property, we have done 10 different uh, options to make sure that we minimize the impact of this uh, property um, to the neighborhood. One of them was to adhere to everything that zoning bylaw wants in terms of depth and height. So we are not asking for any depth or height variances. I'm responding to comments brought up by Paul, the owner of 500 and his mom at 502. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, familiar with the zoning bylaw. The three uh, first properties in the Scarborough Road, which would be 508, 506, and 504, are zoned differently from his properties and the rest of the objecting neighbors, most of the rest of the objecting neighbors. Uh, that part of the Scarborough Road, because it is close to the main artery, it is zoned as density uh, to have density of 1.0, whereas the rest of the neighborhood is zoned as density of R.6. Um, um, and we are asking for less than that. We are 0.95 for height, height of the main wall, um, setbacks, um, everything, including the, um, I appreciate uh, Trisha's, uh, the, um, the last uh, caller's comment about the permeability of the concrete. We are adhering to what is existing and we are adding six inches of concrete to the side of the, um, to the side of the, uh, the tandem parking space and to, to make it a legal width for a parking space. So, um, back to uh, many of the objection letters that we have received, 487, 489, 491, 497, all of them, um, most of them, I don't want to, these, um, unfortunately, they don't have a parking um, as is. They have a narrow uh, semi-detached houses, um, and it is different from the property that my client owns. And I don't think that it is fair to her to say that you're not following any, any rules. It's just. The, we, we actually looked at um, the, the report by Planning and Housing Committee very closely, uh, the one that, uh, that actually resulted in the zoning bylaw amendment of um, you know, adding the second units. Uh, and in, in respect to the number of secondary units, uh, the city of Toronto uh, is the only municipality that allows more than one secondary units. Um, it's just because this law is new, I can understand, and because this property is zoned a bit higher than the rest of the neighborhood, I totally understand the concerns. Uh, unfortunately, because we are adhering to the number of the parking spaces that is required to be provided by law, I, I couldn't do anything furthermore to, to ease uh, their their um, uh, parking issues, um, and I would like to say that the property for uh, 504, which is adjacent to our south, um, uh, I think it was your first caller, uh, the lady named uh, Margaret. Uh, unfortunately, we did not receive any letter of objection from from her. It, it, it was stated by the lawyer that he she, he is actually um, uh, presenting her as well, but we did not receive anything from her. Um, and the uh, letters that we got from Matthew, the, the lawyer that I spoke uh, very um, just closely before Trish, um, that was uh, not received uh, or filed by the uh, by the committee. So that's why we did not have the opportunity to talk to her. And I would like to see what are top objections and how can we uh, put her at ease for that. Okay. And, uh, yeah. yeah uh, In conclusion, I just want to. I just want to thank everyone for patience. <laughs> All right, thank you. Panel members, do you have any questions of the agent? No. I, I just have a question. It's relating sure. to variance number four, and it's yes. about the floor levels within the, the extension at the back, the floor levels can't be higher than the existing floor levels of the portion of the building at the front. Um, can you, uh, if you decided to design your building differently, 
by by building up on to the existing footprint, you could still build three stories. Is that correct? Am I that is correct. That, right? that is correct. We are we are less than the allowed um, envelope by the zoning bylaw. So the zoning bylaw, if it was a, a just a single family house with let's say a basement secondary unit, it was we could have just built all the way to the front of the lot. What we have done is that because we were concerned about the the change to the main wall and the roof, the existing main wall and roof, we have actually maintained that and we have set back the addition four and a half meters, almost 15 feet from the main wall. That was going to be my next question. Is that why you ended up, and that triggered that this variance? Um, I'm assuming that you could build it further to the front of the property or on top of the existing one story and convert it or make it a, du a triplex and then this variance wouldn't be triggered. And I'm not suggesting you do that. I think, you know, that perhaps setting it back at the rear might be more palatable because of the height difference. But um, I just want a clarification about that because is that that's it's, the case. No, that's a, right? that's a very fair point. But uh, sorry, uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure if I'm not unmuted. Okay, that's a very fair point, but I'm not sure that that wouldn't trigger the change of the main wall because we are building it up. So that's why. So, so I think the setback, in addition to the to the mature tree to the front, would really help uh, to actually obscure the view to the to the addition in the back. And we had some uh, samples uh, in five o uh, two and five hundred that we needed to maintain. In addition to that, I just wanted to mention very quickly that we have actually reduced the slope of the drive, the, the legal drive that is already there. Uh, and with that, it is actually and we have um, made it uh, wider by six inches, which made it legal. And and, uh, much more, um, you know, prone to be used actually, rather than people not using it, which is unfortunately the case right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? I have one. Go ahead. One further question. Um, have I missed it? But I can't find a west elevation. You have the no, it, it's labeled as it, both east and west, which no, I'm. I'm the, Sorry, can you hear me? West elevation somewhere. Can you hear me, Michael? It's Carl. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me, Carl? So yes. I'm so sorry, but um, when I sent the updated plans, as it is mandated by the city, I only sent the one that has changed. And if you look at the other set of plans that is on file. Okay, I, I can assume what it looks like. I just. What we've got as um, east and west elevation is in, is the east elevation. I didn't know if there yes. was no, please, a west elevation. Please. I'd missed it. Yeah, please look at superseded plans, uh, July 14, okay. 2020. And then look at um, page, which would be west. West elevation would be A502. Yeah, I don't believe we have those. We don't have it. Uh, it's in the su superseded plans. It is in superseded plans. No, we, we didn't include the superseded plans in the uh, application package. Oh, I'm so sorry. I've, I've talked to the planner a few times uh, um, and um, um, Sylvia a couple of times to make sure that, you know, all of them are included, but apparently it's not. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, any further questions, panel members? Seeing none. Okay, then we'll go into committee. Any comments? Madam Chairman, I think the people in objection um, presented really um, very, very good, well researched, and legitimate arguments against this proposal. Perhaps none more uh, compelling than, than the uh, comments made by Matthew Helfand. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. Uh, he questioned the, um, the lack of compatibility with neighborhood character, questioned the um, intensification, he questioned parking, he, he uh, questioned the uh, pedestrian activity, all of which he argued, and I think he argued convincingly, would be negatively impacted by this proposal. I, um, I'm not persuaded by this application in the way. I think it is inconsistent with the neighborhood. Um, and the only reason I mention um, Mr. Helford's uh, 
presentation because I thought it was so completely thorough and reasonable. Um, for the reasons that he's mentioned, with the same that I hold to you, I will not be supporting the application. Okay. Any other comments? <coughs> Madam Chair, I was just uh, quite intrigued by the idea that there was a difference in zoning uh, just approximately at the point where this applicant's uh, property lies. So there appears to be a bit of a difference between uh, the zoning on one side and the zoning requirements on the other side. Um, there, are, there are examples of homes that have these the, the sort of uh, extensions uh, at the back of the properties. So my sense is that this is not an unusual uh, request that is being made. My only concern, of course, is that uh, you're turning um, what is essentially a single family dwelling into a triplex uh, with three units, and that would uh, cause concern for me. Uh, if we had one secondary unit, that might have been a bit more palatable. So um, I am sympathetic to the application, but my concern is about the, the, the increased density of population in that property two would have been much more palatable rather than three. <clears throat> if I just might make a few comments, I um, I guess I have the opposite view given the, the, the variances that are before the committee and the actual zoning of the property. I was kind of surprised to find when I originally looked at the application that, you know, it didn't trigger a whole heck of a lot more variances in terms of height, density, you know, parking, and it, it doesn't. And it, you know, I then, then when um, the agent pointed out the zoning differs from in three houses for whatever reason, I guess because it's close to Gerard, um, I, you know, so on the face of it, and if I'm looking at it from a, a variance perspective, I don't see a lot of variances here that, um, in my view, that, that don't meet the four tests. So I understand where my colleagues are coming from in terms of how uh, this is gonna look, you know, it's gonna look tall. It's it's going to look different than the some of the existing bungalows. I do agree, but unfortunately from a variance perspective, I, I don't see it triggering any of those variances that we typically tie to tall buildings um, and parking, I sympathize with the parking situation. You know, I also live in a, a busy urban neighborhood and parking is premium in very many, most parts of the city on street parking. Unfortunately, they're asking for variance to help ease off street parking or on street parking by, by putting the parking on site. So they're, they're, they're trying to take cars off the street. So. While I sympathize with the neighbors, I, I would vote for approval of this application. I know I differ from my colleagues, but I just wanted to point out my point of view. Um, I'll just weigh in on this one because I actually echo the comments made by Ms. Valentini. Uh, there is an example, uh, at least one, that's two doors down, albeit it slightly, looks slightly lower, but it's the same idea of what's being proposed here. And then if you go further down the street, there are three-story homes mm -hmm. that um, tower over the, um, the existing homes, the original homes that are there. So I think that, uh, that the applicants and the owners were trying to be sensitive to the neighborhood to have it you know, blend in as best they can. Uh, so I, too, would be inclined to support the application. However, I um, I leave it to one of you to make a motion, and we'll see where it goes. One last comment. Uh, I think Ms. Valentini's comments are very valid. And despite my concerns, I would be supportive of the application. Okay, well, we're going to need a motion um, on one side or the other side of the coin. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm prepared to bring a motion forward for approval. I've already voiced my opinion on this matter in terms of whether it meets the four tests, and in my view it does. So the motion uh, that I'm bringing forward is for approval, and I don't believe there are any conditions. There aren't. Um, do I have a, a seconder for that motion? Yes, okay. Madam Chair, I'll second that motion. 
Okay, I have a motion to approve the application, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, opposed? Ms. Mr. Niffel dissents. The application has been approved. Thank you so very much, the committee. Okay, the next item is, one second is item number 36, 30 Frizzell Avenue. And we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans and elevations, a previous committee decision that affects the subject property. We have a staff report from community planning dated August 5th, correspondence in opposition from number 28 and 32 Frizzell. I have two speakers listed, but they are for the same address. Do we have them on the line? Okay. Um, can I have the agent please identify him or herself for the record? Hi, everyone. This is Ahmed El Kurenchawi. I'm the agent for representing my, my client on the 30 Fraser Avenue. Alrighty. I'm going to need you to do a presentation. Um, no more than five minutes. There will be um, uh, the owners of number 28 adjacent property will be speaking after you present, okay? And I'm starting the clock now. Sure. So basically the condition we have uh, for uh, the house plus the rear yard deck was already exist uh, a long time ago before even my client purchased the house. And that uh, uh, with the, the depth for it, uh, exceed even the minimum requirement for uh, the maximum uh, permitted building depth. So it's even though without uh, adding the garage, it already exceed by three meter point three. Uh, so um, my uh, whole point of building the garage is uh, my client one uh, one half the. Uh, garage as a uh, private garage and uh, with this uh, condition it, it is already uh, difficult <coughs> without it going with no uh, variances so that's uh, the uh, variance number two the variance number three uh, also even though if uh, we go with the minimum size of the garage width and length it will be exceeding the minimum requirement for the landscape, the soft grass of the landscaping. So those two variances is kind of uh, minor and nation natural for uh, this property. Uh, the fourth one uh, is uh, the width. It's also depend on the patio that is above uh, the garage. So my client feels uh, they need an extra space for uh, since uh, uh, the space is pretty tiny together with the family. So they need uh, an extra space. That's why they came up with the idea of having uh, the patio above uh, the garage. And uh, since we see the city already accept the laneway uh, suites and kind of this idea that may be in support with uh, different uh, new idea of uh, uh, creating an extra spaces for the family and uh, everything. So that's uh, the variances number four and number one. Uh, and uh, we uh, saw the opposition of my uh, of the neighbors on uh, both the sides and uh, uh, as as uh, we wrote the, uh, the report we see the report their main concern is about the privacy which is already on the back uh, neighbor there is trusses that already uh, expose their privacy and at the same time, I'm not trying to uh, make any conflicts with the neighbors, but my client like to address that even one of the neighbors on uh, both sides had uh, 
build something without uh, no permit, so the city came for order to comply, and the other neighbor has uh, a trampoline, and that's actually breaking the privacy part uh, of their privacy. Uh, so that's uh, much uh, for the presentation for, for me. Okay. Um, is, um, do I have Aaron Wallace or Tara Vinodry on the phone? Uh, you have Aaron Wallace and Tara, but um, I'm Aaron. I can go first. Um, okay. Yeah, so um, you have two minutes, or I'm sorry, five minutes between the two of you. So are you both intending, okay. are you both intending to speak? We're both intending to speak. Maybe you can cut me off halfway through, or I can just finish and she can then go. Um, I'll yeah, go okay, I'll, I'll, if you're still going at three minutes, I'll, um, yeah, I'll you stop can cut you. Me off. Okay, okay, go okay. ahead. So we're both, co we're both co owners at 28 Frizzell. Um, to highlight my position and our position generally, we strongly object to the neighbor's proposal to build a garage with a second story rooftop patio on top of that garage. As the attached neighbors, we were not consulted on this proposal, despite the fact that the second story garage rooftop patio provides a bird's eye view and direct sight line into our backyard and into the back of our home through our back glass doors. This will significantly impact our privacy and the comfort level in our home. It just seems like it will be very uncomfortable to step out into our backyard and look up and see our neighbors looking directly down on us from an elevated structure. Um, and while I understand that this structure may increase the use and enjoyment of the property of our neighbors, it will also be, it will be done so at the expense of the privacy and reasonable use and enjoyment of the neighboring properties. We both admit that this is not a minor variance. A patio on top of an ancillary structure is an outright restriction of the bylaws, and this isn't a minor change to that bylaw. It's actually a proposal to completely go against that bylaw. Um, we both admit that there's precedent for the denial of such a request in this neighborhood. A similar proposal for a rooftop patio on top of a garage was put forward by the neighbors at 31 Roxeter, which is a few houses down um, and backs onto the same alley. And a number of neighbors were in strong opposition to this proposal, and it was ultimately denied. Um, finally, this is a densely populated neighborhood. We have little privacy beneath, between neighbors as it is. Surely it's not in the interest of the city to set a precedent for a second-story rooftop patio on top of garages, which provide direct sight lines and elevated sight lines into neighbors' yards. Um, this kind of structure will ultimately decrease the character of the neighborhood and the desirability to live in the city by limiting what little, little privacy there is between neighbors. If, um, as far as the trampoline comment, we recently bought a trampoline for our children during this global pandemic because we're both working from home and we have nothing to entertain them and they're four and seven years old. If our neighbors have a property with a problem with that, which I don't know if it's a violation, I don't believe it's a violation to have a trampoline in our backyard. If they have a problem with that, I suggest they speak directly to us about it because we are definitely open to discussion and there's been no discussion from their end on the fact that we have a trampoline or this rooftop patio that looks into everyone's backyard. So I suggest a little bit of communication on their part is in order. Now Tara can go ahead. All right, thanks. And you made it, two and a half minutes. I'm a fast talker. <laughs> Tara? Uh, yes, hi, good afternoon uh, to the Committee of Adjustment. Uh, my name is Tara Vino Dry, and I'm the co-owner of 28 Brazil Avenue. Uh, I also will echo the same comments made by the other co-owner that I strongly object to the proposed garage and rooftop patio at 30 Frizzell Avenue, and I'll apologize for the background noise of my four-year-old son. Um, uh, our neighbors did not discuss their plans in advance of submitting their proposal. And as you will note, both immediate adjacent neighbors uh, on both sides have registered strong objections. Common to our objections are issues related to privacy and the limited enjoyment of our of our yard and home at, you know, in, in favor of theirs. Uh, if you, you know, I, I look at through those sets of uh, requirements around soft landscaping um, and, uh, and length of property, and the rooftop patio, patio sorry, uh, and I don't see these as a desirable development. They are not minor variances, and they don't really support the general intent and purpose of of the um, of the official plan. And this is, you know, in line with what this, uh, the community planning department rules as well in their suggestion to refuse these variances. Uh, and I'll stop there because I, I know that this is running very late for you as well. All right, thank you. Um, okay, Mr. El Karen Shawi. Um, if you can come back and speak only to the issues raised 
And um, I'd appreciate if you would not get into the trampoline or any of that stuff again, because it's not related to the committee's, um, committee's jurisdiction here. Uh, so the, yeah, there's uh, nothing to add. Okay, you have nothing. So, okay, so if you yeah. have nothing to add, then I'm going to see if the panel members uh, have any questions. And you are aware that the planning report is requesting refusal of the application. Okay, um, Ms. Valentini, did you have a question? I just, a uh, little bit of clarification. I, did, I was a little puzzled by the depth variance. Is it a depth or length variance? It's a depth variance. Is that because the deck attaches to the house, which attaches to the garage? Yes, that's okay. what, uh, that was it. And as I mentioned before, the condition that my client bought the house it was already exceed the uh, maximum. I'm thinking if that's an issue, we can uh, uh, propose something that is not connected with the garage itself. So we make itself like a space between the uh, I'm rear not yard. Suggesting that. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that. I just wanted clarification on yeah. that. I mean, I really think the real issue here is the privacy and the overlook relating to the garage with the deck on top. I am not in support of that at all. I just wanted clarification because you said it was an existing condition with the deck uh, yeah. or with the, the depth. Um, and I wanted, I wasn't sure if that related to the um, deck and it seems like it does. I mean, I have issues with the softscape uh, having so it's such a small amount of softscape as well. But my big concern is the overlook for the deck. I mean, that, in my view, is not uh, in any way considered a minor variance. Okay, any other questions of the agent? No? Uh, yes, so uh, what I'd like to suggest since uh, uh, we go over the the maximum allow for the landscape if we can oh. go with a lower space of the garage that way we kind of uh, uh, decrease the minimum requirement for the landscape so it's that at least kind of fix variance number three and number two the depth so it will be less uh, uh, depth uh, depth of the building and also less uh, uh, more space for the landscape so basically so right. yeah basically um the committee can't we're not going to entertain any more changes on the fly here because uh if you're changing depth um i'm you know it, it's going to change the variance i don't know um you know how you're changing it we won't have seen the plans the neighbors would not have had a chance to look at it so um you know we we just can't do changes on the fly uh virtually it's just not possible yes i understand but uh, i in case if we can defer it and uh, we kind of go with uh, new variances if it's the existing variances we have it seems it has a, a concern with the committee members that's well, what i'm if you're if you're asking i didn't hear the word deferral if you're asking for a deferral you won't be coming back on an agenda until 2021 um and i would also need agreement of the of the two people that are uh, your neighbors that are objecting and I would need a commitment if the committee were to grant a, a deferral we would need a, a full commitment for you to engage in communication with your neighbor and come back with different variances not the same Mr. Nipfel okay. you're muted Carl you're muted I don't think that a, uh, a deferral would be beneficial here. Uh, it's not going to address the major concern, which uh, I agree with Ms. Valentini, is the overlook from the top of the garage. It also isn't going to remove uh, what to me is the elephant in the room, which is that the planning department is clearly stating that this is not in keeping with the purpose of either the official plan or the bylaw. Uh, deferral isn't going to be able to address those issues. So I think we should be voting on what we have before. 
I'm in agreement, Madam Chair, and I would uh, be inclined to uh, move a motion to reject this this application. I would second the motion. Okay, we're actually not even in committee yet, but um, yeah. so that was the discussion about the deferral. So I get the sense that are we in agreement the deferral is not not the appropriate way to go with this today? Okay. So um, the committee is, is um, let's just vote on the deferral request to make it official and so we have it on the record. So can I have a motion on the deferral? So I'll bring a motion forward to refuse the deferral for the reasons stated by my colleagues in addition that we've just spent an exorbitant amount of time on this application so to now change that very last minute is not acceptable in my view and i don't think it's the deferral will achieve anything so okay do i have a seconder mr byatt or second it. yes this i'll second okay so i have a motion to uh, to not grant a deferral on this and that was moved by miss Val valentini seconded by mr byatt all in favor okay so that's a unanimous um that we are dealing with this uh, with this application today. So we'll now take it into to committee because the applicant had indicated that he didn't have anything to add previous to the deferral request. All right, panel members, um, comments on a decision on the deferral. Mr. Bayat, you had your hand up. Are, you op are we open to a motion? Yes. I'd like to move then that we reject this uh, application on the grounds of uh, one, the privacy issue and the uh, the fact that a platform on an ancillary building is not acceptable and allowed, uh, particularly in keeping with the planning department's uh, recommendation. Okay. I would second the motion. I have a motion to refuse the application, moved, moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? Okay, the application has been refused, sir. <laughs> Um, my concern was that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Did you? Yeah. Okay. All right. The next item is item number 37, 19 Lapin Avenue. We have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, uh, survey site plan, floor plans and elevations, presentation materials. We have email correspondence from uh, Bell. We have a staff report from Development Engineering and Construction Services dated Feb 9th or 3rd, sorry. And we have Forestry. They're asking for condition number two on um, every part of this application. We have a letter recommend. No, I wrote down two, unless I made a mistake. Um, we have a, a letter recommending approval from Councillor By, uh, Bilo. We have six form letters in support from residents on Lapin. And we have opposition from number 17, who I believe wants to speak today. Um, are you just confirming the forestry condition? Or? Um, yeah, through you, Madam Chair. It's, it's uh, forestry condition number three, which is to pay for the planting of a tree, which should be attached to the consent if you should approve. Okay, thanks. Okay, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Franco Romano here on behalf of the owner. Okie doke. Um, I'm going to ask you to do a, a presentation as we have one speaker in opposition the, um, who lives adjacent at number 17. And I'm starting. Certainly, like if. Yes, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be referring to my presentation material. If staff okay. could kindly pull up slide number one, please. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you kindly. So this is a, this is a property, and it's actually shown on the property map as 19 and 21. In 19 is a, a former automotive building that occupied the entirety of the backyard. So along 19, which is the easterly part of this lot, you basically have asphalt and then you have an automotive building occupying the entirety of the backyard. 
and that automotive building, that front wall of the automotive building, hit the rear wall of the dwelling at number 21 Lappin. So essentially the entire lot was either building or pavement. So there's uh, virtually no landscaping on the property today. So that automotive building is, is partially demolished right now. And what you'll see is that this neighborhood is a compact uh, neighborhood. Wall frontages range from two and a half meters to 9.6 meters. And 78.4% of the lots are smaller than the zoning bylaw requirement of six meters. If we looked at 19 and, six, 19 and 21, the way, the way it's shown on the property map right now, the proposal is very similar to what you see as that line down the middle of 19 and 21 on the, uh, on the property map today. In terms of floor space index, you're gonna have the, the existing floor space index, and that would include the automotive garage that has since been demolished is at 0 0.9, or it's larger than 0 0.9 FSI. So the proposal is at uh, 1.25 and 1.26. I think I have those backwards in terms of part one and part two. So it's not a significant amount of additional floor area, it's just differently deployed for the, for the proposal. The, along the street, you're gonna have two stories and three stories, and there's a mixture, detached as well as multiplex, semi-detached, but even the detached look like they are attached. And that's consistent with what you see at number 21. 21 is basically a detached dwelling, but it is attached to the neighboring building to the, to the west. In terms of front yard setback, you'll see that there is no front yard setback variance for number 21 because that is the prevailing front yard streetscape. So the, the front yard setback is being proposed for number 19, which is the east lot, is to bring the building basically to where the prevailing front yard setback is, and that is in front of where that existing building was on the, on the site, and then in, in keeping with the undulating nature of other properties next door, but it is in front of what's happening next door. So if we go to um, the next slide, slide two, you're going to see the air photo blown up of the existing condition before that automotive building was demolished. Side yard setbacks are very tight. Rear yards that contain sometimes some landscaping and sometimes no landscaping. Certainly accessory structures occupy the rear yard. I think this would be the first rear laneway suite in this position, and that's in full compliance with, with the bylaw. The side yard setback that's proposed, I show it on the right-hand side of the site plan drawing. It's only to the upper portions that project beyond the main side walls. So the side walls actually at, at first floor and for 40% of the second and third floor are more than one meter in size. And just keep in mind that the variance proposed is only because there are openings on the side wall for that portion that is just over one meter. If there were no openings, the side yard setback is 0 0.45 meters. So the, where there are no openings on those second and third floor portions that have the side yard setback that's proposed, those are actually farther away from the side lot lines than what the bylaw would allow without openings. And, and they do not have openings right now. So uh, I'm probably running out of time, so I'm gonna, state that this is a, an infill that's in keeping with the neighborhood character in terms of the dwelling type. And the buildings are certainly more modern today than some of the traditional dwellings that we see on the street. But the, the three stories is less than the 12 meters that is permitted. The bylaw allows a 12 meter height and the proposal is at 9.45 meters. And, the, and there is no, no height or any other performance standard variance for the, uh, for the lane waste suite. So this is, this is an appropriate form of, of gentle intensification within the neighborhood that accommodates dwelling type that is otherwise permitted, found on the street, and uh, I would submit has no significant adverse impact on anyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll have, I'll have you back after we hear from, um, I believe it's Jason Vidal. Are you there? Hi, how are you? Hi, how's it going? It's going well. Um, what is your address, please? It's uh, 17 Lapin Avenue. 
All right, I'm going to start the clock now, so you have five minutes to state your objections. Okay, so uh, next to us, there is the laneway, like um, the individual said, there used to be a garage back there. So right now it's it's all open laneway, and we get a lot of sunlight. Um, the person is trying to build a, a three-story semi-detached triplex that has a depth of 19.55 meters, which is more than one-third of what is actually allowed because it's only 14 meters that is allowed. So really the depth of this new building, that's, this new story that's coming up, will cover up most, uh, give shade to most of my house, all my front yard and most of my backyard. So really I'm gonna lose, my, mom, my mother and I are gonna lose a lot of shade in our house for our garden, for our windows. And it's nearly one third of what's actually permitted. So that's not a minor variance. So these are like major variances. Um, in terms of the maximum permitted floor space index, um, the permitted amount is 0 0.6 times the area. This um, this individual wants to put a three-story semi-detached triplex that's going to take up to 1.26 times the area of of uh, permitted square footage or uh, surface area allowed. So that's once again we're talking about over double of the square uh, the square footage allowed the floor space, the maximum floor space. And like I said, this is not a minor variance. This is we're talking about double the actual bylaw for two of these major major sections. As well, in terms of the um, the side yard setbacks, he's also reducing it by more than half. And we have windows on the on the west side of our building. There's windows on our house on the west side, and he wants to put it down from. It's uh, supposed to be one point two meters. He wants, to, he wants to put it down to 0 0.51, which is, once again, uh, less than double. And he has to understand that we have a bunch of greenery in the front, our front yard, our house is pushed back, and we can't afford to have the, um, him exceed the bylaw of the, uh, the law frontage of six meters and, and go closer to the sidewalk. It's just, it's just inappropriate for us. And right now, this, the whole space is empty, so there's nothing to uh for him to just to stay um to have a leg on and stay and say that he could build that close to the sidewalk when my house is pushed way farther back and he's trying to um to make a depth of nearly 20 20 meters um in terms of um greenery i understand that he doesn't have any greenery right now and i don't take an issue with the greenery part i'm just more issue i'm just more worried about the the square footage of the permitted floor space and the depth of the actual uh, three-story semi-detached that is nearly one-third. Also, by adding this, these, these units, that's, there's going to be eight units in the small area. That's eight units. Let's just say two people per unit, roughly, if, if not more. That's 16 people living in this area right next to my house. That includes six, uh, eight or more other cars for street parking, and it's just it's just a very very dense. It becomes a very dense uh, populated area for for such a residential neighborhood. And we also have um, the gallery of condos coming right behind our house, uh, right behind in, uh, in the corner of Dupont and Dufferin. Those condos, there's about four or five condos being built, and the population density is going to be immense. So to have these other eight other units literally right next door to us. It's going to affect our parking. It's going to affect the community. It's not just a residential person who's just wanting to build a home for themselves. This is all for um, monetary gain, and these are all going to be rentals. And I don't know how we can go over more than double of some of these bylaws just to just um, just to have that person make more income. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, panel members, do you have any questions of the speaker? No? Okay, Mr. Romano, can you please address the concerns that were raised by uh, Mr. Vidal? Certainly, it's, cl it's clear that the zoning bylaw is not reflective of what this neighborhood character is like. When you go along any of these streets, you're going to see, and I've illustrated it in my slides, that the floor space index, the building setbacks, the building lengths, are, are well in excess of what the zoning bylaw has as a standard. And that's the purpose behind the minor variance uh, legislation in order to reflect the nuances and the differences between neighborhoods 
And when we see that the proposal has a building length that is virtually identical to the existing building at number 21, and then if we look at the property map or the air photographs, you're gonna see that buildings, they're not all the same, but there's quite a substantial number a very large representation of other buildings that are longer. And we see that number 17 today has, uh, has a building and this, this uh, my apologies, but this location map that's, that's shown here is just showing number 19. It's got a, a, a highlighted blue part should also be number 21 because it's actually those two portions there. You will see that the buildings are uh, in keeping with what's what's uh, existing both on the street and, and in the neighborhood. In terms of being too close to the street, you can actually see even on this location map and on the air photos that the, the streetscape enclosure here is to be tight to the front, and that is and that is the intent. Um, and the proposal for number 21 aligns with that. There is no variance for front yard setback, and number 19 just mimics that. So if they if this was not a severance and the, and the proposal was to build a, a triplex or an apartment building on this lot, which is 100% permitted by the R zoning, it would have a front yard setback that aligns with where number 21 is today. So at 12 meters in height with a 0 0.45 meter side yard setback where there are no openings. So the proposal is actually less uh, in terms of height, mass, and scale than what could be permitted as of right. The difference being the floor space index. And the floor space index, as we see on the existing site, is at 0 0.9. So 0 0.9 to 1.25 or 1.26 is not a substantial increase. That is a minor increase. And what we see in the neighborhood on the street is that there is a substantial representation. So of, of lots that are well in excess of 0 0.6. They're larger than 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and the, over 1.2, 1.3 is, is being uh, found on, on the street. In terms of sunlight, uh, there will be a change in sunlight, but only late in the afternoon. Uh, the number 17 is to the east of the subject site. So when the sun rises in the east, they have full sun exposure. When it, when it wraps around to the south, full sun exposure. It's only when it's in the late afternoon, late afternoon, where there'll be some some shade. And that shade would be less than what the zoning bylaw would allow as of right. So in this compact neighborhood, in this compact urban forum where lot sizes are very are fairly are, are, are rather small in width, to expect full sunlight for hundred percent of the day is just not a um, something that that is uh, a reasonable expectation. And in terms of the number of people, there is no knowing how many people can live in a single detached dwelling as compared to in a, 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 a triplex. You may have more people in a detached dwelling than in a triplex. And that's why the zoning bylaw does not people's zone. People's zone. So there is no issue with respect to uh, the size of the units, no issue with respect. There is no zoning variance for the size of the units. There is no uh, servicing aspect, and engineering has reviewed it. So I don't believe that there is a, an issue from point of view of servicing, size, and parking. Parking is ample on the on the street, and there's also um, transit within walking distance of the site. So I've already discussed in my uh, in my presentation the side yard setback condition, but I will note that number 17 has side yard setbacks of six centimeters to 27 centimeters, and that is indicative of what we see on the on the street. And the subject site today has zero side yard setback. So subject to any questions, Madam Chair, I submit that there, there is no unacceptable adverse impact. There will be a change, but this change is to be expected, certainly in this neighborhood where this type of uh, accommodation is, is uh, substantially represented. Okay, thank you. Panel members, do you have any questions of the agent? Uh, Ms. Valentini. Uh, yes, Mr. Romano, I, forgive me if I've missed it in the materials. Did you say you provided stats on the FSI? 
if you go to uh, slide number one of my presentation, it says that the existing FSI is in excess of 0 0.9. And this is a frequently occurring FSI condition, including existing and approved development ranging from 0 0.83 to over 1.3 times. What? So you've, okay, you, but you have you over, over 60. No, I didn't give a, what, what uh, radius, a listing. What radius did you look at? I was just, these statistics for FSI, I'm just yeah. looking at Lapin Avenue itself. Okay. Just on Lapin Avenue, you've got from 83 to over 1.3 and something like, I, I don't have it uh, by fingertips here, but it's over 70% over of the lots are in excess of 0 0.69 which is that, uh, that zoning cap where you're doing a rear, a rear addition, you're allowed to go to 0 0.69. Okay, any further questions, panel members? No, no questions? All right, let's take it into committee and discussion. Okay, why don't I start? <laughs> um, I, I really respect the comments um, that were made by the, the neighbor at number 17. Um, in looking at the area beside, across, and down the street, um, this, the house at number 17 seems to be sort of a standalone on this street, whereas the rest of the, the homes are, are all quite large. And I guess this auto repair shop, I don't know why it was talked even further back, but I'm of the opinion that what's being proposed um, is actually going to be more in keeping with the neighborhood in terms of the setbacks from the front and, and the look. Um, so I, I would be inclined to, to support the application. I, I don't see any comments from planning on this. But I, again, looking at these, these homes, they do look like the density would be roughly in keeping with what's being proposed here um, for the most part, with the exception of, of this little house um, at number 17. I'm not sure why it wasn't lined up with everything else, because I know planning usually likes to have the frontages consistent. But unfortunately, it's not. But again, what's being proposed, uh, in my opinion, um, would not be out of character with, with what's there. Anybody else going to weigh in on this? I'll go, go weigh in on this. I, I'm inclined to agree with you. Um, <clears throat> the, the variance is requested in particular are quite substantial. A very attractive area, a real mix of, of housing types. And I that the existing condition is not desirable. Um, I think the proposal, as the chair indicated, uh, may in fact be an improvement. And I do think it is inconsistent, out of character with what is already in the area. So I'm inclined to support, and also the proposed uh, consents don't uh, suggest lot widths that I think are out of character with the area either. So I'm inclined to support the both consent and applicant. Okay, anyone, anyone else? Um, just a comment as well, Madam Chair, that um, unfortunately as, as, uh, as uh, concerning as it is for the resident of number 17, as you expressed, uh, his home or that home uh, seems to be an anomaly in that uh, vicinity. Um, so while I, I sympathize, I can also see that the changes that are coming 
um, uh, are you know, almost inevitable. Okay. Um, anybody care to make a motion? Madam Chairman, I'd like to bring forward a motion of approval uh, on the consent application subject to standard consent condition. Condition number three. Uh, forestry Great. number three and uh, standard consent conditions and engineering uh, the Feb 3rd report. Yeah, there'll be 11 conditions in total. Yeah. Yes, the standard one. Okay, so I have a motion to approve with those conditions moved by Mr. Niffel. Do I have a seconder? I'll second that, Madam Chair. Seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Okay, the application has been unanimously approved with those conditions. Thank you kindly. Have a nice evening. Appreciate your help. We're not the, done the yet. Variance. Oh, we're not, done. Sorry, we're sorry, we're not done yet. That was on the consent. So sorry. The, the variances, um, am I going to have the Madam same? Chair, I bring, could I bring forward a motion of approval for the variance subject to, I believe the only condition there is forestry number three. No, through you, Madam Chair, the forestry number three will just go with the consent once they arrange with forestry about what's going to happen with the trees, because there's no point in putting it. You can't plant a tree prior to construction. So, okay, we'll so just we put don't it need in. any conditions? No, no, there are conditions for the laneway suites from engineering. Standard condition, yes. Okay, can we do them both at the same time? Okay, so this is for both of the consents, Mr. Niffel. So the engineering conditions right. in the Feb 3rd report, um, moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by? These, Madam Chairman, these are for the variances. Yeah, this is for the both of the, the two, two sides of the semi. Variant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do I have a second, Mr. Bayat? Are you seconding this as well? Okay. Okay, so motion to approve um, for both part one and two, the variances moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Bayat, including the engineering conditions for both. All in favor? Okay, so that's also unanimously approved. Thank you kindly. Okay, thank for your you. Evening. Okay, thank you. Okay, the last item today is item 38, 25 Indian Road Crescent. And we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. And we have an aerial photograph of the subject property, covering letters from Bernard Watt, as well as presentation materials, email correspondence from Bell Canada, staff reports from development engineering, and we have forestry, um, well, we have a forestry report that's asking for refusal. We have correspondence in opposition from a lot of residents on Indian Road Crescent. And Ed, Edna Baxter and Wanda Road, uh, as well as a solicitor um, on behalf of Ken and Barbara Sherratt. And I am showing uh, the agent as well as the owner on the speakers list, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six speakers in opposition. They're all there. Okay, so um, can I have the agent please identify himself for the record? Um, my name is Bernard Watt. I'm the architect and agent. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to ask you to do a presentation on the application as we have. Um, a number of people who want to speak to this, so you have no more than five minutes. And um, if the homeowner has something to add, then it would be part of the five minutes. Okay, um, I think I'll do the talking. Could I have the colored site plan from the presentation material? Yeah, we're getting it for you now, and I'll start the clock after it gets put up. Okay. Um, all right, uh, before I get into the nuts and bolts of the application, 
I would like to put forward a request from the owners. Uh, we've had several conversations with the neighbors and with urban forestry and have come to the conclusion that a majority of the issues stem from the three small language suites above the garages. We would like to ask the committee today that conditions be put in place to eliminate all three small language suites above the garages should the application be approved. The one-story garages would remain. Um, should the committee not be willing to do this, we would then ask for a deferral. Uh, I think in order to um, understand this better, uh, I will continue with the entire presentation and we can come back. Okay, well, just, yeah. sec just a second. Um, so you just stated that you either want a condition put on, which I don't think that the committee would be inclined to do, and then secondly, you wanted to um, have a request for deferral. So if we're going to um, go the route of deferral, potentially, then we're not going to go through a full-blown presentation today, uh, right, because there's no point. So first of all, I, I guess uh, I'll ask, um, I don't think a condition would be appropriate because I'm not sure how any variances would change. A lot of the variances are going to change, so I've just been advised, so that's, no. not, so that's not an option. And I think you've heard us say repeatedly throughout the day today that we're not doing any changes on the fly because it's not to anybody's advantage because uh, if we, we give incorrect information, you're gonna be back here anyway. So the, what we may entertain is a deferral, but only if, some, uh, if the objectors are in favor of a deferral, if that's the route you want to go. If not, we're going to hear what's before us. Okay, just to um, um, complete your um, position, uh, this would not uh, eliminate only one variance, the, the um, soft landscape variants, but it would not affect any of the other variances in any way. The laneway suite variance is the only one is the soft landscape. If you eliminate that part of the proposition and there is really um, no change to the rest. We don't have the plans. Okay, but we don't have the plans and um, so it, it, we don't have plans that indicate the change. So, uh, you know, we're not and, and through you, um, ahead, Madam Chair, I'm not sure that we're just eliminating the laneway suite over top of the garage eliminates the problem that forestry has with the trees. But um, maybe you can ask the applicant, some of the neighbors, whether or not they'd be opposed to a deferral. Also, I guess the other question is, is if it is deferred, are you maintaining the three lots? Or are you considering revising the no. severance component? Sorry, I, I was cut off. I didn't hear what's, uh, Sorry. what's, uh, what's said. Are you still proposing to go forward with three lots or is the, are you also going to be considering reducing the number of lots? No, I haven't spoken about a number of lots. Okay. I only spoke about the elimination of each laneway seat right. in each lot. Okay, so through you, Madam Chair, if you, when you ask the neighbors if they're uh, for or against deferring this, they, we should also know whether or not they are for or against three lots. Because if they're opposed to three lots, there wouldn't be much point in deferring it today. Okay. Because if it was to be revised to two lots, it would mean that it would be a whole new application. You'd have to either withdraw it or refuse it or make your decision. You could refuse it on being premature and then they'd have to reapply. Okay, so let me, let me, so Mr. Watt, I'm just gonna go through my list here um, and only ask them how they feel about a deferral. And if, um, if it appears that there's still issues, e even if with the removal of the secondary suites, then I think um, the best is to proceed today. Okay? Okay. All right. So let me start with um, Anna and Andre French. Are you there? Uh, yes. Hi. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks. Um, so uh, you're, um, at, you're at 21 Indian Crescent. 
so I do That's not, we're not getting into any discussion about the application right now, other than I would like to know if you're in favor of a deferral and the intention of the applicant is to remove the secondary suites on the garages, um, everything else stays status quo. And uh, no, we are not uh, in favor of the deferral and we are opposing the severance uh, of the property into three lots. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Wood, representing uh, 31 Indian Crescent, um, your position on what I've just stated? Uh, my client would oppose a deferral. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Russo, 33 Indian Crescent, your position on a deferral? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, are you in favor of a deferral? So, no, no, I'm not in favor of the deferral because we don't know where the location of the garages are gonna be, so I, I'm against the deferral. Thank you. Mr. Stewart, 47 Indian Road, are you in support of a deferral? Yes, I am in support of a deferral. Okay, and um, you you recognize that if a deferral were granted, that the only thing that would change would be the secondary suites? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Kubersi, you're at 9 Indian Crescent. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, they are no longer in the uh, hearing. Okay, what about Natalie Renner, still in the queue? Yes. Okay, um, Ms. Renner, 19 Indian Road, are you in favor of a deferral? Yes, I'm in favor of a deferral. And you also understand that the applicant will only be removing the second, um, the, the suites, secondary suites? Yes. Okay. Yeah, just so I'm clear, if we defer, they still have to come back to the committee to get the other variances approved. Yeah, yeah, the, the, everything okay. would be deferred. They would make revisions. And they Understood. And they hopefully would be consulting with um, the neighbors before they come back. Okay. Yeah, then I'm in favor of the deferral. Okay, um, do you have that person back? No, but there's one, uh, there's one more that was on here. Okay. Oh, Who is it? Jim Baxter, Mr. Baxter, are you there? Yes, I am. And you're at 53 uh, Indian Road? Indian Road Crescent. Um, just to the deferral, are you in favor of a deferral? Okay, just so my understanding is removing the laneway suites, uh, how does that change the soft? area because the well, that's, the still whole, that's, that's uh, why we're not willing to yes. make it change on the fly because we don't know so, so I I'm not willing to support a deferral okay so you don't support a deferral no okay um, and the other person is basically gone is that correct yes that's correct okay so Committee members, um, based on this uh, quick survey here of the people um, that are speaking, we have four, uh, hang on, one, two, three, four, yeah, four who are not in favor and two yeses. Okay, and the only change is going to be the secondary suites, which will probably change the softscape and we don't know what else. So. Um, Let's uh, discuss the deferral then. We'll take it into committee. Madam Chairman, I don't see a benefit in a deferral today. I think we should proceed with what we can. Okay, <clears throat> anyone else? So I didn't quite hear Mr. Nepfel. That I don't see a benefit in a deferral. I think we should proceed with what we have in front of us. Okay, thank you. Ms. Valentini? Uh, I, I agree. I think this is a significant change to be making at this late stage. And um, frankly, I suspect there will be many more variances triggered if, just my thought, if the garages are going to be in the same footprint as the laneway suite. So um, 
I, given that we have a number of uh, residents who've taken time to sit in the queue all day for this application to be heard, I think it's too late in the day to defer this. I'm not in support of a deferral. Okay, so um, I'm going to need a motion on the deferral then. I'd move that the deferral be rejected. Okay, do I have a seconder? I'll second it. Okay, the motion to defer is refused. Moved by Mr. Niffle, seconded by um, Ms. Valentini. All in favor of refusing the deferral? Okay, so the deferral that is a unanimous um, carries to refuse the deferral. So Mr. Watt, um, I'm now gonna ask you to, um, to do your presentation. We're proceeding with the application as it sits before us today. Okay. Um, the dotted red lines indicate the location of the existing house, three-story house, uh, which is a multi-unit house in uh, relatively poor shape. And at the rear, you see an existing garage, also in red dotted line. Um, Terra Firma Homes, who are the new owners, are health builders. Uh, who recently completed two similar projects, three blocks to the north of this location. Um, they know the area well, and they know um, the buyers in this area as well. Um, these three proposed detached houses are aimed at families with children. Why three lots? The pie-shaped configuration may makes lots wider at the front and narrower at the rear. The test for a lot width, in this case, is the second floor design. Uh, we can fit two children's bedrooms at the front and a master bedroom at the rear with good windows, and that means that the lot is wide enough. Um, at 29 feet, in lot traffic width that each of these three lots have, um, they are a bit narrower than the two semis to the north of them, uh, 31 and 33, um, but they are quite a bit wider than the 11 semis to the south, starting with 21, 19, which are 21 feet in frontage. There is eight additional feet in frontage between these three houses and the ones to the south. Um, this proposal is consistent with the planning framework established by the Provincial Policy Statement, Growth Plan for the Great Co uh, Greater Golden Horseshoe, and with the City of Toronto official plan. The proposed severance and detached houses maintain the pattern of streets and lanes, prevailing size and configuration of lots, prevailing heights, scale, and building types of existing dwellings. It maintains the prevailing setbacks and relationship to grade. The proposed houses respect the unique grade and topographical features of this unique street. Subway station, schools, and high park are all within a short walk. Planning and transportation did not request any changes as a result of circulation, other than a small widening at the very end of the lane uh, designated as part seven in the site plan. Urban Forestry wrote a memo regarding two existing mature trees at the rear on June 17 of this year, but did not send it to the city until August 6. And it was put on the file on August 7 when we read it. Um, the issue is whether the red oak located, um, marked in a black dotted line on top of the middle Anyway Street, um, is a healthy tree as urban forestry maintains. According to the arborist engaged by the owners, this tree is in decline 
with a depleted canopy, not from retrenchment, with exit holes from insects and bird pecks on trunk, with large dry branches and a dry new growth in the canopy. This project is about renewal, and we feel very strongly that this tree should be renewed and three new healthy and grown white and red oaks be planted instead so they can grow and age in unison with the new houses. Each lot uh, accommodates one car in its own garage under the proposed language suites, which are relatively small spaces because of the width of the lots and have a stair going up and a, um, a kitchenette, a small washroom, and room for a bed or sofa. Um, these, um, just my notes. The purpose of these language suites is uh, either a granny suite or a nanny suite, a teenage room, a guest, or in the pandemic time, an office. Um, and it can also be rented for a single person. This single person, we don't think would have any vehicle to park. Um, um, Mr. Watt, you're at five and a half minutes. I'll give you another minute or so, but I'd like you to start wrapping up. Okay. Um, the variances, uh, the main wall diagram, which is the other diagram that uh, is available, can you go back by one? No, only that one. This indicates the variance about uh, uh, the red is the condition as proposed. The green is what would be allowed um, if one were to bring the third floor to the front. Obviously, the view of the sky and of the trees is diminished if we were opted for that option. We prefer to bring the third floor to the middle even though because it's straight, according to the design, it creates a variance. Uh, if we go back to the elevation view, the three elevations, thank you. Um, this has to do with a technical variance. Because of the laneway suites being at the rear for uh, fire safety purposes, there is a need to have a separation of one meter between uh, the flat car setback or between the houses, and we chose to have uh, the side yard setback at zero on one side in order to maintain uh, the passage for the fire people at all times. Um, lastly, the uh, FSI, uh, the, the neighborhood allows for 0 0.6 uh, times uh, the lot and uh, 0.69 if there is an addition at the rear. We have 0.74 and 0.75, which are minor, minor increases. Um, okay, you're, you're the, at seven and a half minutes, so I'm gonna to have to stop you okay. here, sorry. The, the, last, the last variance is the uh, soft landscaping, which occurs between the, uh, the main house and the laneway suite. It, again, it's a very minor variance, only uh, a diminishing in each case of less than three square meters of soft landscape. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, um, I'm going to go to the opposition and then we'll have you back to uh, address the concerns that were raised. So I'd like to start with Anna and Andre French. You have um, five minutes between the two of you. If you can please state your name and address for the record. Are you there? Uh, sorry, Anna and Andre. Okay, I think you guys are unmuted now. Try speaking into the mic. Hi. There you go. Yep, you're good. Hi, can, can you hear me? You. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this is Anna and Andre French. Uh, we're the owners of 21 Indian Road Crescent. And um, I will be speaking on the on behalf of uh, both of us. Um, our home at 21 and Union of Crescent, uh, which we have lived in for 16 years, is directly adjacent to the proposed development, and we will be severely impacted by the proposed build. In addition to our property, many other homes will be affected, 
as reflected by the numerous uh, letters of strong objections that were submitted to the committee opposing this bill for various reasons. We ask that this bill be denied, not uh, uh, to be deemed not a minor variance, as it is an inappropriate development for this street. Granting this variance would have permanent adverse effects and do a substantial injustice, not only to our immediately, at each other immediately adjacent property, but also to the entire neighboring area, since the laneway is encircled um, and utilized by homeowners on three separate streets, Indian Road, Indian Road Crescent, and Ronda Street. Uh, most importantly, the requested variances will negatively impact our property as the proposed build is grossly oversized in length, width, height, and not only will it increase the density, but also its enormous footprint, footprint will directly interfere with the enjoyment of our property, as, it, as I will illustrate in the following five points. Number one, there will be an adverse impact on the light and total shade to our entire property, including our basement. Currently, we enjoy much afternoon, um, much afternoon light, including the setting skies of the sunset, and 85% of our existing windows will be directly affected, and as the, major, um, as the majority of our windows face the proposed bill. Number two, there will also be a tremendous loss of privacy in our home, since the proposed balcony and the 13 windows on the side will be directly facing our hours within only a few meters, where currently there is a significantly larger distance between the two homes. Also, uh, the quiet enjoyment of our backyard will be affected due to a proposed build of three second uh, uh, floor laneway suites, which will not only be facing directly into our back windows, but will also now be peering from above onto our entire backyard. Number three, there will be an adverse impact by the proposed removal of the cedar uh, trees along the pro property line that we currently enjoy as part of our side fence and have incorporated its year-round greenery into our backyard design. Also, we're concerned about the uh, a potentially significant environment, environmental impact of this development and therefore object to the removal of two large uh, mature oak and maple trees, which currently provide much needed shade, as well as the habitat to many bird species that frequently visit our backyards due to our proximity to High Park. Um, Additionally, we have a major concern of the impact of the reduced green space on our property and the implications of the stormwater drainage and the absorption of rainwater as we are graded below this property with a retaining wall on the property line. Currently, most water gets soaked up by the ground, so if it were to be built over as proposed by the builder by extending the setbacks, most water would now potentially flow towards our property, causing under, unforeseen damage, not to mention the municipal, municipal sewage implications with the increase of the density. Um, number four, the severance into three separate lots with three additional laneway suites effectively makes six dwellings. Furthermore, these dwellings could be further subdivided into smaller dwellings, numbering up to 15 independent units where previously a single family home stood. All this will have a directly negative impact with the increase of population density in such a small area. And number five, the density will significantly increase vehicle traffic in the laneway and surrounding streets. Uh, the laneway is already congested due to it being the only vehicle access to our properties. Due to the steep frontage of our properties, the laneway is also the main access point to our homes on foot. This creates a significant danger to pedestrians, especially children using the laneway area. Moreover, due to the increase in density, the already overcrowded street parking will be heavily impacted. In conclusion, we ask that our objections be seriously considered and that this variance application be denied on its merits. Thank you. Okay, thank you, panel members. Do you have any questions of the speaker? Okay, the next speaker is um, Mr. Wood. Um, good evening, um, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, as you've noted, um, I'm uh, counsel, legal counsel uh, speaking on behalf of the owners of 31 Indian Road Crescent, which is the property immediately to the northwest uh, of the proposal. Um, Mr. Ken Sheridan and his wife, Barbara Sheridan. 
Um, uh, the sheriffs oppose the uh, consent applications and have a uh, and uh, would request that you uh, do uh, refuse uh, the variance ap application in regard to the uh, the um, uh, height of the main wall, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, as far as the severance application is concerned, um, first of all, the, the overall plan uh, is ill-conceived. Um, it doesn't take into consideration uh, the provisions of the official plan uh, in regard to uh, the tree, the rather significant oak tree. Um, in my, um, uh, I had sent a supplementary uh, material to the to the um, committee, uh, which set out the, the policy of the official plan, which I will read to you um, in the event you can't find it. But it says basically that a, a laneway suite should not result in the injury or removal of a healthy tree, um, as uh, you know defined by the municipal code. Um, <clears throat> in this instance, it's clear that urban forestry have said that there is a very significant healthy tree um, that sits um, almost mid-property and would um, affect uh, the construction of the three laneway suites and raise a serious questions as to the viability of the three uh, lot uh, lots that are being proposed with or without um, the laneway suites. Uh, secondly, um, in considering the issue of the laneway, um, uh, the regulations that would apply to a laneway suite, um, a poly, uh, regulation 150.8.30, uh, which is also attached to this material, uh, indicates that a laneway suite must be on a lot with a rear lot line or side lot line abutting a lane for at least 3.5 meters. Um, the total extent of the rear lot line of this um, lot um, is slightly over two meters. So um, the total lot, it's 2.63 meters in total. So it's impossible to have three lots um, that would meet the requirement of 3.5 meters uh, in, and for each lot. Um, the logic of this uh, requirements in regard to rear lot line has a lot to do with the original planning that went into uh, uh, laneway suites. Um, and the problem that this set of laneway suites uh, presents for my client is that if you look at the plan that's uh, is being proposed, the laneway suite that is proximate to my client's property sits almost squarely in the middle of their yard and would be a very significant physical presence. It can go up six meters, two stories, and, and, and without a, a, any setback from the lot line. So it's, and if you look at this, it sits between number 31 and their frame garage. Um, it's, it's quite a remarkable situation and uh, very disturbing to our clients. Um, now, the issue then is the laneway, whether or not you have laneway suites, the three lots are encumbered by the tree. And, um, and that, that means that there's a serious question about the viability of the three lots with or without the laneway suites. But once one has consideration of the laneway suites, then um, it's quite clear that, that the requirements of the Planning Act that you consider the appropriateness of the lots and their sizing is is um, is not satisfied because these lots do not have the um, the requirements uh, uh, of the to, to meet the bylaw regulation in regard to lots a uh, lot to frontage. Um, if I can uh, move to the um, the matter of the variance in regard to the. Uh, main lot. And I should point out, one of the problems that this applicant has is that they did not get a, a zoning order. Um, um, they're just proceeding by, wa by waiver. Mr. Wood, you're at five minutes, yes. so if you can All right. please just wrap take up. Me, take, me one, oh, take me one minute to finish yeah. this. Um, because they didn't seek a zoning or um, a notice, they didn't 
identify the need to deal with the 3.5 meter rear lot size. And also in our view, and I'm saying the view of our firm assisted by our in-house planner, land use planner, the variance that they're seeking in regard to front and rear main wall is actually misplaced. The side wall, main side walls are 10 meters and they are, uh, do not comply with the bylaw requirement. Um, and, and so therefore there should be a request for a variance. My client opposes that um, because uh, a main wall of, not, of 10 meters at the side of their, against their property blocks three significant windows, shadows, um, uh, and, and affecting light and air of, of three windows, two of which are important um, bay windows. Okay, you're now over six minutes, so I'm gonna have to ask I'd you. I'd ask you to refuse the applications for consent and for variance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions of the speaker? Could, could the speaker reiterate the concern he has about the missing variant? Like, I didn't get it all, but the gather he uh, for this to proceed, he'd need a variance to the side yard. The side yard height, sorry. Need a, a variance to the, the height of the main side wall, the main wall along the side. Okay, thank you. That's the, um, the you know, that's, that's the provision. They've asked for a variance in regard to front and rear wall, but as we look at their plans, it's a problem with the, with the side wall. Thank you. And that's what that's what affects it. I'll give you the okay. number. It's 10.10.40.10, which says the maximum height of specified pairs of main walls are either 7, point, uh, 7, 7 meters or 2.5 meters less than the permitted height, which here is 10 meters, so that would allow 7.5. So they're well in excess of, um, of the permitted height on the main side walls. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions of the speaker? Seeing none. Okay, Mr. Russo, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm ready. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My name is Felix Russo and I live at 33 Indian Road Crescent. I also own a home at 546 Indian Road on the east side of the block. My wife and I have lived at 33 Indian Road Crescent for 43 years. There are several reasons why I think this proposal in its present form should be denied. Uh, the, we're voting today on the laneway house, even with the garage there, there's still problems, uh, it's still problematic. I'll explain why. The division into three lots, three very narrow uh, shaped high lots, uh, it creates uh, serious problems. Uh, if the lots were rectangular, we can understand how a laneway house or garage would fit in. The, uh, just trying to find it. Uh, okay, no, I'm just gonna go on. The laneway house now becomes, in effect, the way, what they've designed there, if you look at the, uh, uh, the first uh, image that you showed with the layout, the laneway house really now, be, because it has been moved forward, it really becomes a backyard, it becomes a backyard uh, house where most of the neighbor's yard is now abutting a two-story structure. The environment is enjoyed by the neighbors to the north is negatively impacted and is boxed in by a 5.5 meter wall. In the case of 25 Indian Road Crescent, the building of three laneway houses would also involve cutting down a mature tree that currently provides a canopy over neighboring properties. Given that the proposal is to replace one primary dwelling with three, each of which holds the possibility to be further divided internally, we feel the proposal to add three laneway houses to be excessive. The creation of three laneway houses is just too much for the current context of 25 in North Crescent. Another concern I have um, is the right of way access to the main house from the lane. It's already been mentioned that the laneway here is a vital, uh, I say vital essential uh, source of uh, access for the properties. The reason being is that the houses on this property and along the rest of the uh, of the street are on a hill. Uh, our lot at 33 Indian Road Crescent and the lot at 31 Indian Road Crescent are pie shaped with a single garage at the back and a right of way in between the garages, which allows access to the laneway from the main house. I have 12 steps in front of the house. 
And from thir number 33 to number one, the hill becomes progressively steeper with more and more steps. The flat laneway access, in effect, becomes the main primary access for the homes on the hill. Because the houses are on a hill, the laneway access becomes an important access point. I would say, and it's already been uh, uh, mentioned by the first presenter, it becomes really a primary access point to each property. Now, the builder has mentioned that they're aiming these at, uh, at uh, young families with small children. You will also notice that on their plan, there are also several steps in front of the house. So given the choice, do you enter from the back or do you climb up the stairs with the, holding a baby in your arm? Obviously, you're gonna enter from the back. But the way they've designed it right now, even with a garage, there is no laneway access. The people, even the people renting the house or even the garage, uh, when, you, when the garages are built next to each other without any right of way between them, uh, the only way to access from the laneway is to open the garage door and walk through the garage, which could have a car already in there, and holding groceries or imagine trying to deliver a fridge. In our experience, access to the main house from the lane has been essential in providing a safe entry point for people with disabilities and for emergency services. We have a friend in a 600 pound motorized wheelchair. The only way she can visit and have access to our property is through the laneway. From a safety point of view, I can relate a personal experience where emergency services was called and I was wheeled out on a stretcher. The laneway access was critical due to the level ground access it provided in order to allow prompt emergency care. The three laneway houses proposed, uh, built on the, on the lot line, with no right of way between them, cuts off access to the main house from the laneway. I asked the Committee of Adjustment to consider these issues in evaluating the proposal to build three laneway houses on, the, on these pie-shaped lots and deny this proposal in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Russo. Any questions of the speaker? No? Okay, thank you. Mr. Stewart? Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Tyler Stewart. I live at 47 Indian Road Crescent. Um, my main concern, it, like many of the other uh, residents in the area, is the laneway and the laneway suites. Um, the prospect of up to additional six more families because of six homes, um, which is 20, potentially 24 more human beings, and uh, potentially six to eight more vehicles, um, parking in behind the property. Uh, uh, the house currently has, or the, lane, the property currently has one home and one garage on it. So that's a pretty alarming increase in density uh, for me. Um, my child and my older children have played in that laneway growing up. We use it every day to get to our house. That is the main access point for our house. We don't have a driveway at the front of our house. Um, and uh, I think the, the turning radius of each corner getting back to that section of laneway is quite small. So I'm worried about safety issues due to the increased volume of human beings and vehicles. Um, the other thing is the relative quiet of the laneway back there. Um, the prospect of three laneway houses, it's a lot more people back there. Um, a laneway suite has already been built directly behind my home and my lot. And uh, that's uh, led to an increase in noise because 10 more people live there. And, uh, you know, I know laneway housing is a priority for the city. Uh, three new ones in my laneway plus the other four units, seven laneway houses in the last five years. And to me, that is a, an alarming increase. So um, I'm hoping that uh, the builders, the owners could consider a smaller development, perhaps two houses. And I liked the idea of eliminating the laneway housing that the architect started the conversation off with today. Uh, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I would like to see less people in the laneway, less traffic, and this development adds to more people. So and for those reasons, uh, 
I'm asking the committee today to uh, consider not approving this development. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stewart. Um, I don't believe there are any questions of the speaker, so I'll move to Ms. Renner. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, uh, the speaker, Janan uh, Kubersi, is uh, in attendance now. Is in attendance. Okay, so, um, okay, sorry, Ms. Renner, I'll go, I'm trying to stay in order here so I don't miss anybody. So I'm gonna go to Janan Kubersi. I need you to state your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes to speak. Are you there? Uh, I'm on the phone. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yes, and, and sorry I was missed earlier. I had to go onto a different phone. Um, thank you very much for uh, allowing me some time. Um, I live at 9 Indian Road Crescent, uh, which is part of the row of semis. Uh, that um, continues on after number 21. Um, I, I support all of the submissions of my neighbors that were um, filed in writing. Uh, I also live in a home um, in which the, the main point of access uh, is through the laneway. So the, the maintaining the integrity and the viability of that laneway uh, is really uh, important, you know, not just as a homeowner, but really as a community. If we if we look at that um, whole area as a community of people, uh, so you know, given my concerns about how the uh, proposed development set out in the application um, will um, have some fundamental differences from the, the prevailing physical characteristics in the neighborhood, um, that, that is a concern of mine because when, when you look at the application as a whole, you know, dividing the lot into three with the um, three main house structures and then the three proposed garage slash laneway houses, um, and the various requests for a variance. I think when you when you look at the plan as a whole, uh, I think you have to get the the requests for the variances uh, can't be considered minor um, because they they will have a, a significant impact on the nature of the neighborhood um, and on the enjoyment of the neighbors, so, so I support the immediate neighbors in their concerns. While, while I am a little further away from uh, this proposed development, um, I do have a real concern about the impact on the laneway. Um, I just think this proposal uh, is an attempt to put too much onto that property. Um, I think that uh, I, I would agree with the, the submission uh, that Mr. Stewart just made that, you know, perhaps a, a smaller kind of development. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I would just note that I'm, I'm not opposed to laneway suite development. You know, we're not coming from that perspective, but here we have a proposal where um, we have three pie-shaped lots and then the proposed three garage slash laneway suites um, the potential for population density and vehicle density, I think, will will overwhelm that rather small space there. And I also have the safety concerns um, that a number of the um, people who filed objections uh, alluded to. Just uh, the laneway is um, somewhat tight to navigate, and the prospect of adding the number of people and potentially vehicles uh, with this proposal. Uh, is, is a major concern in my view. Um, so that, that, that's all. That's all. I, I just um, want to um, indicate that I, that I do support the objections, uh, the written objections that have been filed. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'd just like to remind everybody to um, please not repeat uh, things where possible. Um, if you have new concerns, by all means. Um, Ms. Renner, are you there? I'm there, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I'll do my best to not reiterate anything that's already been said. I actually want to ground my objection. Oops, sorry, I set a timer and I guess that was not effective. Sounded like a fire alarm. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to adhere to the time. Yeah. Um, 
But sorry, I want to grab my objections and the requirements of the Planning Act. Um, you know, as indeed you're no doubt aware, it's going to require the Planning Act requires you when you're considering a plan of subdivision to have regard to the health and safety of the people, present and future inhabitants. And for my view, um, the proposed subdivision, as it's currently contemplated with the three laneway suites, does not achieve this objective. And there's three reasons that I want to walk you, some of which you've already heard, and I, I will be brief on anything you've already heard. First, I don't believe this um, is in the public interest. And this is threshold reason for this is because there are significant safety concerns with putting these laneway suites in. As included with my objection letter, there's pictures of the properties that are adjacent to this, including showing that all of the 12 properties to the right of these proposed properties have upwards of 15 stairs. So every single one of these houses, which is 12 properties, use the back laneway. That includes school-aged children. We use it effectively as a sidewalk on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's a unique property in the sense that there's a lot of pedestrian traffic that is not otherwise seen in typical laneways. So, and the fact that um, in the property itself is pie-shaped perpetuates this problem because there's significant sightline issues where they're proposing to put the garages. The garages are all um, abutting to each other. And so now you have a situation where you have six residences and six potential cars at a minimum. And Mr. Watt had proposed that the laneway suites would be occupied by a single person who would not have a vehicle to park. I think we can all agree. We don't know if anyone who occupies a laneway suite is or is not going to have a car. And you aren't really being asked to consider that. The point is, is the bylaws that approve laneway suites describe them as self-contained living accommodations. So a self-contained living accommodation means one person living or a family living Presumably, they can or cannot have cars. So I think that's a real consideration. We've gone from a single family residence to a situation now where we have six residential dwellings. And I, I'm not opposed to development per se, and I'm not opposed to laneway suites. I'm opposed to the laneway suites on this property. Because I think another um, aspect of the Planning Act that it doesn't take into consideration is that the suitability of the land for the purpose for which it is to be subdivided. Given the nature of this land, I submit that it's not suitable, um, given the pie shape aspect of it and the sight lines and the um, resulting safety concerns. And the last being the dimensions and the shapes of the proposed lot, which is another factor in the Planning Act to be considered. And because this is a pie-shaped lot, we are being asked to consider whether or not a garage with a residential dwelling on top could be a safe building to be put in. And from my perspective, this all for these three reasons, the objectives of the Planning Act cannot be met for the purposes of this subdivision. Um, I would just add, that these are minimum standards that the policy, the Planning Act requires you to consider. And I think that when you're weighing considerations, safety has to be one of the paramount considerations. And so when you have a laneway that's effectively being used as a sidewalk, that's a unique factor that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, like Mr. Stewart and uh, the previous person who just spoke, I don't oppose necessarily the buildings themselves. Um, I am very receptive to having the laneway suites being removed or less buildings being put on this property. And I would note that the Planning Act allows you, 5125 of the Act allows you to impose conditions to the approval that are reasonable. And I think the reasonable condition would be to allow for the, the build of two buildings or three with the exclusion of the laneway suites and garages. Okay, thank you, Ms. Renner. Uh, any questions of the speaker, panel members? Seeing none, all right. Our final speaker is, um, is it Jim Baxter? Yes. Okay. Thanks for uh, the opportunity to speak. Um, I basically agree with pretty much everything that's being said, uh, so I won't repeat. Um, recently, there's been two fires in uh, new house construction that are built to the minimum fire standards that we now have. And one unit turned into the loss of all units. One in Toronto, one in Hamilton. Hamilton was 14 units lost. So uh, the architect referred to the two building sites that he had, he's already done in this area. One on Indian Rock Crescent, one on Abbott. Uh, he's got 23 inches in between the two units that he's built. Uh, the fire separation appears to be these concrete panels that are installed. Some of them look like brick, some look like other things. That basically gives you a, a period of time to get out of the building safely. It does not give the adjoining building any safety prote uh, protection. 
if the interior is fully engulfed, it's going to go through that wall, it's going to go to the next building and the next building. The house that is existing is a double wide brick house. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware, somewhere around 1904, uh, there was a fire in downtown Toronto that took out most of the downtown core. After that, there was uh, regulations that houses had to be built with brick, and preferably double wide brick. That's two layers of brick. And that gives you a fairly safe fire separation. If you have a fire engulfing the house, you basically have interior damage, and this, you do not have structural loss, except in very few cases. So uh, Mr. Sherratt, who lives in 31, uh, he's got a fairly good distance between his property and the existing house. Uh, they're proposing to go right up to the property line. Um, so his house is now in peril. Um, one thing I'd like to note is that um, his house, 31 and 33, uh, the facade is actually bent to follow the curve in the street. And the line across 31, Mr. Sherratt's house, is actually pretty much in line with 25. In the site plans that the architect has provided, uh, he's actually got the outline of the existing house about two meters further out in front. So this is misleading. And the front of the existing houses, they're pushed about 15 meters out, uh, going by the scale that I can read, in order to give the soft uh, landscape in between the houses and the laneway suites. This is at the sacrifice of the, the soft land between the property line at the front and the house. So not only is Mr. Sherratt losing uh, sun at the, the back, the small uh, unenclosed veranda which the architect is using as a, as a dotted line on the site you've got, or the page you've got up. He's using the front of the veranda, which is open, and therefore not a permanent structure, should not be considered for the part of the facade of the house, uh, which shows the curve going out to the front of the proposed houses, where in fact, if you follow the, the line of the house, it would basically be back two meters behind where they've got the dotted line for the existing house. And way back, 15 meters back from the existing, or the pr proposed houses. Now, Mr. Stewart uh, pointed out that uh, the noise from the one laneway suite that we now have, um, I use the third floor of my home as our family room. And one day I, couldn't stand or couldn't believe the noise that was coming from the back. I went out on the deck and there was some party happening with the laneway suite. And I can't imagine and don't want to imagine three more of them. Anyways, um, if you go to my document, um, uh, item number four, uh, I made a, an error, uh, for, end of the first paragraph, it says approximately five meters out in front of this line. It should actually be 15 meters out in front of this line. Um, the, the density, sorry, uh, down, down, next page, that, that page. Okay, so chapter, the end of that uh, first paragraph, it says five meters out in front of the line. That should read 15 meters out in front of the line. Okay, Mr. Baxter, I need you to wrap up. You're at five minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it just seems to me that the whole project has a total disregard for human safety, and it's all about greed for profits. I'm all about the history of the area. I'm a, 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 a director of the uh, Junction Historical Society, or sorry, Junction Conservation District. And the loss of this house, which is one of the manor houses in the area, which people walk the street continually to look at the architecture. 
it's the reason I moved to the street 29 years ago, because I love the architecture. To take one of these houses down, one of the larger mansions, it's disgraceful. I believe that there's plenty that can be done with the existing house, and it's not in bad shape. The structure is sound. And that's speaking as a general contractor myself. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Watt? Yes. You have five minutes to rebut to the issues that have been raised. Uh, first of all, I'd like to comment that about half of the conversation that um, took the neighbors, uh, I could not hear it. Okay, so it would cut off and then it would continue. So I will try to answer the things that I heard and I cannot speak for the other ones. In the relationship to technical matters and variances, uh, and to clarify, main wall uh, legislation allows for uh, something as Are you there? Is the internet? Hi, Bernard. Uh, we think your internet is what's cutting you off. Uh, you, you, we can't hear anything you're saying right now. So we're going to try giving you a call uh, on the number you provided. OK. Oh. Hi, Bernard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <clears throat> uh, you can continue with your rebuttal. Okay, I don't. did you hear the part that uh, I explained that I, I had heard only about half of what was said? Yeah, so basically I'll tell you the concerns were um, A, about taking, no, um, I, uh, like, so I don't, I, you don't want to know, then just go ahead with your no. five minutes. Okay. No, 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 what I'm saying is, I will, I will go with the responses, and if there's anything major that I miss, if you could alert me to it, and I will, I will respond then. Um, the first item has to do with the technical um, issues uh, related to main wall. Um, the main wall uh, legislation is based on front and back or side and side you're not required to provide main wall restrictions on all four sides of a house. This is the way the building department interprets this and uh, there's no um, gray area on this, it's pretty black and white. So we chose the front and the back, meaning that the uh, main wall legislation does not apply to the sides of the houses. In regard to the relationship of the uh, access to the language suite, from the lane, um, you will notice on the site plan that the lane continues past this property and then there's a line that cuts across where the other pie-shaped uh, lots start. All of that is part of the lane uh, by virtue of a bylaw passed a long time ago. And so, in fact, this property has the connection to the lane at the very end as well as along the side for a total of 12.6 meters in length, which divided by three gives you more than the 3.5 meters required for each uh, lot. However, this is not drawn properly here, and uh, we can modify that, but this does not create a variance uh, for the language suite. In terms of the, um, there was another issue that was technical. Oh, the other aspect has to do with the tree. Um, the uh, urban forestry has used the word healthy tree, I think partly because the official plan when it talks to about um, language suites says that you cannot injure 
or remove a healthy tree in order to build a laneway suite. So uh, urban forestry is, for, is forced to use the word healthy uh, to express their opposition. Uh, we, as part of our um, deferral, we, uh, we were talking to urban forestry about this and we think we need an expert opinion on the health of that tree. Um, in relationship to water issues that were mentioned, uh, obviously the, the slope at the uh, side of 21 um, is severe and uh, this has to be addressed uh, with uh, proper drainage. Uh, the opportunity of this uh, renewal that we are trying to create here gives us the opportunity to deal with that in a proper manner. Um, in relationship to all the suggestions that were made of access from the lane, I think those are very valuable suggestions which um, we as designers and owners and proponents are not fully aware or haven't been fully aware and are, are learning as a result of the discussions with the neighbors in, a few days ago and these uh, input today. We appreciate that this, this is an important component. Um, let me see what else. Oh, uh, there's, there's a, a lot of talk about this laneway house. Uh, the definition is laneway suite. And a laneway suite can be big, medium, or small. These are extra small. There's 360 square feet, including a stair, washroom, kitchen, and a common area. So a family cannot live in 360 square feet, barely a person. They're not really for living, but they could really be practical in a pandemic like this one. Um, the current house has four units in it. Some are bigger, some are smaller. The owners live there, but there's separate access to the basement at the front. There is one car and one large RV that are permanently parked at the rear or where up to the moment of the sale. I think the sale has now been completed. Um, I think those are the things that I could uh, note down uh, interspaced by long silences. So I'm doing my best here. Okay, I, th I think you captured the uh, planning related matters uh, quite well. Oh, Quinn, can I add one more thing? Uh, yeah, it's related the to the gentleman that uh, spoke about fire. Um, obviously, these buildings will be subject to a detailed review by uh, building officials of the City of Toronto, and they will most certainly comply with all the uh, regulations of the entire building code uh, concerning distance between uh, buildings and materials to be used when the distance is very small, like non-combustible non materials, non-combustible cladding, and fire ratings from the inside. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Watt? No? All right, we'll take it into committee. if I may just uh, make some observations. Um, when I look at uh, an aerial view uh, on a Google map of uh, properties just to the southeast of the subject property, uh, it's quite apparent that you know, these are very small lots and they're all on very slivers of, of the pie. Uh, my sense of listening to all the, the uh, comments uh, made by various opponents to this project uh, seems to suggest that the, 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 the turning this lot into three slices perhaps is a little excessive. 
So my concern at this point is uh, slicing, uh, subdividing this law into three as opposed to perhaps two, which a couple of folks actually mentioned. So I'm not quite uh, comfortable with the notion of uh, uh, subdividing it, uh, the lot into three. I would agree. It seems to me that uh, dividing it into three, bearing in mind triangular property, um, they add to the problems that were mentioned about not. S sorry, Carl. Uh, do you mind bringing the microphone up to your uh, mouth? Just we're having trouble hearing you. Oh, yeah, there How's you go. That? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's better. Okay, I I agree about the um, the uh, subdivision of two properties. I think the difficulty uh, that have been raised about um, access from the lane, the fact that the lane's used as a pedestrian entrance to the properties and it's a community asset, um, is exacerbated by trying to divide this into three properties rather than leaving it at one or dividing it into two. There's also the problem, the adjacent owner that has uh, the new house right on the property line next to his, uh, next to his home. Uh, I think those problems flow from uh, an overly aggressive subdivision of land into three lots. And I agree with my colleague. I think that three is perhaps in this particular case too many. I would add that uh, in combination with the um the laneway suites, this is a, like an overbuilding of the lot. And to suggest that these are not going to be used as living space um, doesn't quite make sense to me. Um, so I, I think that the concerns raised by the, the neighbors were very valid. I would say with respect to it, it, it has a history to it, but I just would like to state that there, it is not a designated property, therefore we don't have our heritage department weighing in uh, on that front. Um, but I do believe this is uh, an overbuild of the lot. Okay, any further comments, uh, Ms. Valentin? I just, uh, sure, I'll just weigh in, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. I also agree that it is definitely, as proposed, an overbuild of the lot. I question uh, the appropriateness of three lots in this case, particularly for the use proposed, which is three detached houses plus three laneway suites. Um, and I would also question the appropriateness of this lot for three detached houses without the laneway suites. So I think it's too much on the lots. The detached houses in the area um, that are on are on much bigger lots. Um, the smaller lots have semis and they're proposing to put, we have to look at the use of proposing and they're proposing to put three detached houses on these three proposed lots, um, notwithstanding the laneway suites. And I think that's too tight and that's you know, reflected in the variances themselves. I don't think that's in keeping with what is going on in the neighborhood. The detached lot, the detached houses are on larger lots in this in this neighborhood. Um, so I feel like my colleagues, this is an overbuilt. So I am not supportive of the application. Okay, I'm going to need a motion, Mr. Baya. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'd like to propose um, a motion that the proposal as presented uh, not be accepted, be refused on the grounds of it being overbuilt, subdivisions by two to three not acceptable. Okay, do I have a seconder? I would second. Um, so yes, this is for the severances as well as the, the variances, correct? Mr. Baya? That's right, yes. Okay. Yes, indeed. Okay, do I have a seconder? Yes, I'd be happy to second that. Okay, I have a motion to refuse the uh, entire application, including the severance as well as the variances for parts one, two, and three. Moved by Mr. Bayat, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. Um, all in favor? Okay, the application has been unanimously refused. Okay, the committee stands adjourned at uh, 6.53. Thank you, committee members. Enjoy the rest of your...